is Red Band coming to you live from Antones in Austin, Texas, for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Here's Tony Hitchcliffe. What's up, Austin, Texas? Good evening and welcome. It's a live audience here at Kill Tony. You guys excited to be here or what? The great Brian Redband is here. What everybody. is up, guys? We're here, new residents of Austin, Texas. How exciting is this? This is the first episode of Kill Tony with an audience in uh, over 10 months. Wow. Wow. Feels great to be here, guys. The great Ryan J. Ebelt is here via uh, streaming services, <laughs> and uh, we're excited to announce that today, as you listen to this show, it is the release of the new Kill Tony the Coloring Book, everybody. Yes. You're the first people to hear about this. Yes. There's a new coloring book with all the drawings of Kill Tony without the uh, color, and you get to you get to color it. <laughs> that's what uh, that's what our target audience is. Yeah, a lot of meth heads are really happy about that. I heard. <laughs> and uh, we got fed today by the great Yoni, a local talent, uh, Vito's Pizza. It turns out Austin, not known for their pizza, <laughs> so we found a barbecue guy. His name's Yoni Barbecue, and you can follow him at Best Barbecue. He has that handle on social media, so it goes to show you how good his barbecue is. He's at Best Barbecue. Caveman Coffee, use the promo code KILLTONY. And here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode possible for you. Hey, y'all. Recently, more than 100 Twitter users got their accounts hacked into. Passwords, email addresses, phone numbers, and more. All taken from high-profile people like Joe Biden, Elon Musk, and even Kanye West. These kinds of attacks are getting more frequent and more severe. And it's not just Twitter. Facebook, eBay, Uber, Adobe, and Yahoo have leaked Data as such as passwords, credit card info, and driver's licenses belonging to billions of users. Look, if someone can hack Joe Biden, just imagine how easy it would be for them to hack you. That's why I use ExpressVPN to safeguard my personal data online. It seems pretty easy that somebody could actually hack Joe Biden. So that's a bad example. But according to recent reports, hackers can make up to $1,000 from selling someone's personal information on the dark web, making people like me and you easy lucrative targets. ExpressVPN is an app that funnels your data through a secure encrypted tunnel so that no matter what device you use, you can have peace of mind every time you use the internet. The app connects with just one click. It's lightning fast and the best part is ExpressVPN works up to five devices simultaneously so you and your whole family can stay protected. If a breach can happen to powerful individuals, it can easily happen to you. Yes, it can. So protect yourself with ExpressVPN the VPN rated number one by CNET, Wired, and countless others. And if you visit expressvpn.com slash killtony right now, you can arm yourself with an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash kill Tony. Visit expressvpn.com slash kill Tony to learn more. Today's episode is brought to you by Sheath Underwear. Sheath makes the softest, most comfortable boxer briefs I have ever worn. I mean, I wear them all the time. Golf, right now absolutely everywhere. If you're sick of boxers that are too loose or briefs that are too tight, Sheath is for you. Here's what makes Sheath unique. The stretchy fabric is made out of moisture wicking technology. It feels silky and keeps everything cool, comfortable, and in place. It's the perfect underwear for working out. Plus, the mo most unique thing about Sheath underwear is that they have dual pouches that keep your man parts separated, which prevents them from sticking together. This is huge for working out and being in hot environments, or if you just want to make winter activities more enjoyable. Yeah! You know what will make pumpkin picking more fun? Making sure your balls aren't stuck to your thighs. Sheath underwear will make that happen. No more chafing, no more gross ball sweat, just comfort and support. Now, for some of you that might not be interested in separating your man parts, I still recommend Sheath. You can wear it like any other boxer brief, and it's crazy comfortable. And one more thing, these look good. Sheath makes it look like you're packing. <laughs> or if you're packing, like you're really, really packing. So go to sheathunderwear.com to make your junk look giant and get a pair of the most comfortable underwear you'll ever own. And if you use code TONY, you'll get 20% off your order. That's sheathunderwear.com. Use the code TONY for 20% off. And we're back. Austin, Texas. Are you guys excited to be here or what? Yeah. 
As with all road episodes, we'll go guestless tonight to uh, fill in, to feel it out, and to uh, get comfortable here in Austin, Texas. However, everybody's been asking, what about the band? What about the band? On top of a lot of special surprises that we have lined up for tonight's episode for you, the Kill Tony fan and the people that were brought here by real Kill Tony fans because they had to buy a table. We're excited to announce that you're the first people to hear and see the stylings of our new Kill Tony band. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the best damn band in the land. John Dees, Michael Gonzalez, Michael Hale, and Jimmy Blazer. <laughs> we have a new band, everybody. We are now racially diverse as ever. <laughs> this is very exciting. Oh, wow, there you go. It's been said. That was my inner conscience yelling uh, from the other side of the room. No, that we love Jeremiah. By the way, Jeremiah is going to be here at the Vulcan Gas Company this Thursday, headlining his own show, The Little... <laughs> <laughs> the little baby boy is all grown up doing his own show, but we're excited. I met John uh, a couple weeks ago. He plays keyboards with the great Gary Clark Jr., and uh, here he is now on the keys. Welcome to the show, John. He's on social media, John Keys. We're going to find out more about everybody a little bit later. We have a bucket for the first time in absolutely forever. I mean, we had a bucket in L.A. with uh, four or five or whatever pre-selected people swirling around the bucket for five names isn't any fun. But we're excited to announce that here tonight for this very show, out on that sidewalk right now, waiting, and some of you in this room, over 80 people signed up for tonight's show here in Austin, Texas. A true scene where anything can happen. And when I call the name, someone out there is going to yell the name that I just called, and uh, they're going to safely and briskly walk to this stage. Um, so be on the lookout when someone, I mean, they're probably going to, someone's going to fall. Just a reminder that Antone's Kill Tony, Golden Pony Productions, and Death Squad Productions are not responsible for any injuries that occur <laughs> during the taping of this show. Uh, so what do you guys think? Should we start this thing or what? We're live for the first time uh, ever. I mean, live with an audience. So uh, let's start with one of the surprises, shall we? Instead of reaching into this bucket while 80 people wait in the freezing cold on early January, uh, let's start with a surprise. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy going up first, a regular on Kill Tony, one of the longest standing regulars in the history of the show. To start tonight's show, Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of our all-time favorites, the great, the powerful, Big Red Machine, William Montgomery, everybody, with a brand new 60 Seconds. Uh, Vanderbilt had a female kicker in football this year. Uh, Texas A&M responded by saying, female kickers, what's next, female cheerleaders? No Texas fans in here, I guess. Um, I wish the opioid crisis would end so my girlfriend and I can start doing them again. Uh, you want big dick energy, reelect Nixon. Uh, Richard Nixon is so sexy, Frost couldn't cool him off. <laughs> no history, people? That's a hell of a joke for people that know history. Uh, G. Gordon Liddy broke into the Watergate Hotel, but he couldn't break into show business, so you tell me how life isn't fair. <laughs> uh, for Christmas this year, I'm going as Santa Claus. Man, these jokes aren't working. Uh... Can I do my other, my two last Santa jokes? Yeah, absolutely. Go right ahead. Uh, if I was a millionaire and I could live wherever I wanted, I'd probably live at the North Pole with Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, say what you will about Santa Claus, uh, but he's not Muslim. <laughs> okay, that's it. There you go. William Montgomery starting tonight's show. So nice to be here. You're in front of a live audience, William. How does that make you feel? It has been a coon's age. 
Uh, uh, Wait, what exactly? What what length of time is that? It's a figure of speech. It's like three weeks. Who says what, three weeks? Who yeah, I says think that? Age is, is three weeks. Who told you that? Where'd you learn that from? He's from the South. It's three weeks, I think. All but right. it's been way longer than three weeks. I haven't seen uh, this many people on the ground. Uh, it's been a Coons age. Okay, I would stop saying that if I was you. <laughs> William, so it's been a while since we've seen you. Welcome it to Austin. Has. How was your trip to Austin? Man, I thought I was having a heart attack in the airplane. Why? I got really sweaty and dizzy. You did? Yep. What did you do before getting on the airplane? I don't know. I had to take my sweatshirt off. Oh, that was it. You just were over. And I got a little better. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I thought there was going to be a big twist to the story. It turns <laughs> out you're, you're just like a big baby. You I just, just got real hot. Too yeah. many clothes on, huh? Yep. Too many sweatshirts. So how did you spend? Uh, how did you spend your holiday, <laughs> William? We haven't we haven't really gotten a chance to catch up. It was so nice. Uh, I'm always a big uh, celebrator of our Lord Jesus Christ's birthday. Um, yeah, it was just a really nice one. Yeah, what'd you do? Opened up presents. Who got you presents? Uh, my brother Vance back in Memphis. How how many presents <laughs> did he send you? He sent me two. He sent me a master's koozie and a t-shirt. Wow, this is the saddest Christmas <laughs> I've ever heard of in my life. Your, your mom actually <laughs> sent about 40 pounds, she said, of cookies to give away to all of us. And I noticed that I never got any cookies. David didn't get any cookies. Did you eat 40 pounds of cookies? I did. That's why my tummy looks this way. <laughs> it is true. For those of you just listening to the podcast, William has returned to the show looking like someone electrocuted a pile of mashed potatoes. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> I don't think that's a real laugh. What the fuck? <laughs> is William Montgomery. Uh, no, it is true. For those yeah, this really hasn't gone well. I uh, apologize, Texas. Normally, I am... Um, you opened up with a joke about Texas A&M and Vanderbilt and then Texas... I don't know who people fucking like around here. I was trying to <laughs> fucking get the crowd on my side. There one, was maybe one of, Texas A&M fans in here. One of the things we've seen you do is pander to fans. It was one of our favorite things when you were doing it. Uh, you want to give it another shot? You want to try to pander to these Texas people? See what gets them to go crazy? Let's do it. Here, here's William Montgomery pandering. Hold on. Who's someone from Texas? Are you doing, <laughs> you doing crowd work right now? Yeah, hold on. Give me a name from a Texan. What about George W. Bush, y'all? <laughs> He's from Texas, isn't he? I love George W. Bush. What y'all think about George W.? I lo He's from Connecticut. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Don't fuck this up for me. It was finally starting to go kind of all right. He's from Connecticut, you fucking bitch. Name Seriously, stop. Seriously, stop. Name someone else from Texas. Don't ask. Just go with your gut. Someone from Texas. Who is, who is the... Uh... Okay, here, ask me again. All right, who, who do you love from Texas, William? Let's give it up for Toucan Sam. <laughs> Look at all these people are mad. You don't know these people from Texas. <laughs> these people have a lot of pride here, William. I've really messed up. I was kidding with Toucan Sam. Now, William's originally from Tennessee. You guys are both considered the South to most Americans. Uh, what, uh, what's different between Tennessee and Texas to you, William? Probably all the black people. Whoa! <laughs> Jeez, all right. You told me to say that. <laughs> you told me to say that. <sighs> my goodness. So, uh, yeah, my goodness. William, you talked about, you had multiple jokes about Richard Nixon tonight. Uh, did you just learn who that is? I did, actually. Um, the uh, 32nd president of the United States. Um, yeah. Really been, fun guy. It's been many a coon's <laughs> age since he was in office. <laughs> it has. Wow. Jesus. William, what else are you looking forward to doing during your time here in beautiful Austin, Texas? Uh, I think uh, gonna, David and I are going to uh, scuba dive some in one of the springs. 
Why, yeah, do you, really why do you always to... connect Texas with scuba diving? Because the last episode you told me you're going to murder me uh, when I was scuba diving. Yeah, and, and some uh, fucking springs. Do people do that here? Do people scuba dive in Texas? I you, I just don't hear. I'm sure they do. There's a but... lot of scuba diving here, Tony. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> the place really went crazy for scuba diving. <laughs> yeah. Scuba diving and Toucan Sam got the same response. My God, yeah, it's been nine months, and I was feeling like I was on a high horse, and now this, and it is turning into a literal nightmare for me. It is interesting. For the, again, for those of you just listening, <laughs> he looks like the Gordon's Fisherman drowned. This <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> is a, uh, a charismatic look, William. You're wearing the hat. Is, what, is there anything underneath that hat special you want to show the audience? You want to see it? <laughs> look at that. The crowd goes wild. Y'all see this shit? Look at that. That is incredible. <laughs> He's looking Merle Haggard tonight. I, and you uh, have uh, socks and penny loafers on. Is that uh, something you read about in GQ? It is. It's a new look. It's a new look I'm going for. How's your love life, William? You leave your abusive girlfriend at home? Y- was she mad that you came out here? <laughs> She's sweet. She's going to watch this. Okay. So don't say abusive because I I I get abused when that happens. It somehow turns into my fault. So do, you have any bruise, do you have any bruises right now you can show us? No, I'm fine. It's been better than ever recently. Wow. Was she upset that you came out here? Uh, she, no, she was real supportive. Yeah. <laughs> William, some people supportive. told us that uh, you got a little bit too drunk last night. Uh, you want to tell us something that maybe happened last night when you got too drunk? Uh... I uh, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right. How it, many drinks do you think mistake. you had yesterday? If you had to guess, I'd just probably, a, uh, sixteen Lone Stars. <laughs> Scoot up for Lone Star. Hey, lots of Lone Star. There it is. We we know what he's opening with next week. <laughs> right. Well, William, so much fun. Is there anything else that you should catch us up on or that you want to plug or say or anything? Uh, I will be at Showtime in the Apollo in two weeks. There you go. I don't know if I believe that. All right. <laughs> William oh, Montgomery. Fun. This is great. I know. Thank you so much. William nice Montgomery, to, everybody. To there we go. It has begun. Yeah! Yeah! God, we have a real band, everybody. Yeah, so much. This is absolutely so nice. incredible. Don't hear a saxophone in our ear screaming away. <laughs> you know, I, th- I think William was really hung over from yesterday. He seemed I, kind of, he seemed a little out of it or something. I think so, too. William, William's a little bit, uh, I don't know, he may have caught the Rona while, uh, while here. All right. You guys having fun? You get it yet? See, to me, this is always the fun part. A real stranger right off the fucking street. Completely anything can happen. And we haven't done this in 10 months. So you guys ready to get to this bucket or what? It's been a long time, so maybe you don't know. I pull their name out. Once they start talking into the microphone, they get 60 seconds. At the end of that 60 seconds, you hear the sound of a kitten. And then if they run the light, they bring out the angry uh, Sixth Street Bear. And your first person of Austin, Texas. Wow, this is crazy. This young lady actually came here all the way from Los Angeles. She's been made famous in the last few months on this show by being the psychic of the show. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Christy Belich. That's incredible. Christy Belich. First up. Yeah, the stairway's that way. All right. There she goes. There we go. Here she comes. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, Christy Belich. Uh, So I just found out that my ex-boyfriend is now fucking my now ex-best friend, you guys. I know, right? (laughs) The thing is, as long as I knew my ex-best friend, that motherfucker was always a lesbian, and this dick was not the dick to change her over. 
you know, like it was like cocked to the side. You had to Crisco that shit. You had to go to Home Depot. You had to get that all shit right up. But anyway, I lost breath. But the thing is, before I moved to LA, I donated my bed to his family, which means they're fucking on my old bed that has my period stain on it. And it's not even like the nice, straight out the art store, goddess, pomegranate, red flowing blood. It's like the chunky brown, like Jackson Pollock, straight up on that posturepedic. Christy Bellich. This is what I think. Wow. I feel like if Red Band was a woman, he would have written a set like that. Oh, no. <laughs> My period blade's chunky. No, that's... That shit was a lot... Very graphic. That reminds... I, mean, I used to do that kind of graphic shit. It is. Shit He's hard as a rock out. back I mean, here I mean, right I'm now. hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> is this true that your, your ex is fucking... What was it? Your best former best friend? Yeah, this was a true story. I moved to, to Los Angeles with my ex, and then... Uh, uh, I kicked him out, kicked him straight to the curb. Why'd you kick him out? Because uh, there's, okay, there's a lot of men out there, probably not my lovely musicians on stage, but there's a lot of men out there who ain't motherfucking shit. Wow. You know what I mean? Why, well, why was this guy not shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's me before I got on stage. Uh, what he what are you now? Shit. What what sound, <laughs> what sound would she make now? <laughs> Wow, tiger and a goose. What so, if they? So what happened? It? You kicked him out. Why exactly? Because uh, you know I was the breadwinner. I was the one paying the bills. I was working at a yoga studio in Santa Monica at the time. I was like cleaning. I was cleaning like yoga. Wait, you want a bunch of bread? Red Band's even harder hey, than it was on. before. <laughs> breadwinner. Okay. Yeah. So how was he contributing? Was he was he fun in bed at least? You know, I was thinking about his dick earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, have you ever, like, they're, they, they're, like, missing a front tooth, but their dick is really good. So, like, it's, like, they, it was cocked to the side, but it was long, you know? So it, like, could get around and, like, could do the job. Wow, I'm about to vomit right what? now. <laughs> Whatever. You know, You're, he's hard right now. <laughs> yeah, once you said man with missing a tooth, right. I got hard as a rock. <laughs> I'm into that wacky shit. That's why I moved to Texas. Did you so? Did you drive here or did you uh, fly out? I drove here. Wow! Wow! What a superhero! Yeah. What kind of car do you have? I have a 2013 Hyundai Elantra, and it died in El Paso. Oh no! That's the worst. Anywhere El but El Paso. <laughs> I stopped off at a Red Lobster on my way here. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> in El Paso, I, 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 it hurts me to say this. Worst Red Lobster experience of really? my life. Who, who would have guessed that a Red Lobster in El Paso wouldn't be the... They don't have that fresh seafood at the uh, El Paso? No, we, we ended up filling up on uh, the cheddar biscuits. Because oh, that's cool. It was the only thing that came out. Yeah, I, I stopped at El Paso also. It's like it, you go back in time like 40 years. He, like all the signs, like the Arby sign had like the big like cowboy hat still and yeah. shit like that. Yeah, it was yeah. like a saloon. Yeah. It was like a saloon red lobster. How would you fix your car? Did you get it fixed there? Or? Because of Jesus. Okay. Je like everywhere. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> There are these 24-hour tow guys that just happened to be at the pilot that we were, were stuck at. Uh -huh. And uh, they were able to get... It was the starter. So they, like, taped... This was, like, as ghetto as it gets, but they taped the starter together. And then it just... We had to keep it running. We even had to fuel it up running the wow. whole way here. Yeah. Jesus. Wow, my goodness. So you're stuck here now. You're not, you're not going back, probably. Uh, I'm between here and Oklahoma, so I'm like doing the road between uh, Texas and Oklahoma wow. for okay. as long as I wow. need to. Between so Texas and Oklahoma, you're bound to find another guy missing teeth. Exactly. <laughs> incredible stuff. So I find it in, yeah, amazing, you know, that we've always talked about the incredible bucket and how it writes its own storylines, but out of all the people that signed up, you got pulled first tonight, and we've known you on this show. You've become a, literally a once-a-month regular for those of you that haven't been keeping up to the non-live audience episodes, which I completely don't blame you for. Uh, 
but you've been doing psychic readings famously on the show. Is there, do you have anything prepared for tonight that you might be able to do? Well, I have my, I brought cards just in case, but I was going to do spirit totem power animals for 2021 today. I don't know what that means, but go right ahead. Do whatever you want. Okay. Hi, everybody on here. Uh, So I was going to say, you know, everybody out there has like a spirit totem animal. And I was actually at like a yoga center this weekend and I was like meditating about tonight. Uh And they said I was going to come up and talk to you about how you're the golden pony. Okay. Um, But really just to tell you, you're a very bad pony. This is getting weirder and weirder. Why am I a bad pony? This is disturbing. This is your li- this is your your lifelong task is to figure out how to be a better pony. Christy, I'm starting to figure out why you got guys with missing teeth <laughs> yeah, walking you- out on you. Everybody has a totem that they they use to help them get through some shit, you know? Uh-huh. So my question for you guys is what is your animal spirit totem to you? And I'll tell you what your animal spirit totem is. I don't really get it. You go ahead, Red Band. Gay. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I I have no idea what she's talking about. Uh, Yeah, we're confused, Christy. We're not. We're not that smart. Yeah. We 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 just made friends with Joe Rogan, and uh, (laughs) the rest took off. Right. All right. Okay. Well, well, what animal represents your spirit? What represents your heart? Why um, did you call yourself the Golden Pony? Is my question. I didn't call myself. My friend, my friends gave me that nickname, and unfortunately, it stuck. I didn't really like it when it started. But But you uh, kept it because you didn't like it. Didn't really. Wasn't the nicknames aren't really anybody's choice. You know what I mean? Like I don't really like the Golden Pony. Uh, Red Band doesn't like it when I call him the Human Breadstick. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like you you don't really get to choose Uh, these things. You know what I mean? Do you have a nickname? Did anyone ever give you a nickname? The Firewolf. The Firewolf? Yeah. Damn. That's a lot better than Icy Pig, I'll tell you that. But, uh, okay, that didn't, not really, okay. Everyone's got to, just kidding, Chris. Is it because of my tummy? No, no, (laughs) no. (laughs) No, not at all, Christy. No, I was talking about, you know, just a little bit nasally. I like ice cream. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, I think you and William can go hang out and... Uh, <laughs> all right. I mean, if you told me I was coming on stage, I would have brought my cards. I would have been ready, you know? This is the actual show, though. You know, you got you became popular on this show during a downtime in which you were pre-selected, but this is it. Now people don't know. But I'll tell you this. You've been on so many episodes lately. We're just going to keep speeding through it. This was great. Okay. I think I, th- I think you were fun. Thank you. This is one, in fact, that's one of the best performances by a female comedian I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Christy Belich, everybody. Hey. There she goes. Let's get back to this bucket. All right, here we go. Hey, how about a big hand for Zach Bogus up here? Everybody's six feet away from one another. We're all socially distanced. He's got—he's switching in brand new. We're not even sanitizing the mics. We are switching out the microphone between each one of these monsters here tonight. So, uh, Zach Bogus. All right. This looks like a brand new name. It's been a long time since I said that. Make some noise for your next comedian, Greg Larson, everyone. Greg Larson is next on Kill Tony in front of a live audience. God, I love this music. There he comes. Here comes Greg Larson. Come on, one more time for Greg Larson, everybody. There's a new COVID vaccine for puppies. The main side effect is autism. When Latinos get the vaccine, do they develop Taco Bell's palsy? (laughs) The virus mutated right when we got a vaccine. That's messed up. That's like finally getting the balls to break up with your abusive girlfriend. And she says, you can't leave me. I'm pregnant. I'm like, screw a vaccine. Get me to the closest staircase. This is Moderna! 
You know why they call those assault rifles AR-15s? Because that's how old you have to be to kill your math teacher with one of them. I'm Greg Larson. Thank you very much. Wow, look at that. Signing out at 58 seconds, Greg Larson. Welcome to the show. This is exciting. This is like uh, William Montgomery if he took vitamins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show, Greg. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, just over a year. Just over a year. All of it here in Austin, Texas? Almost all of it here, yes, sir. You born and raised here? No, I grew up in uh, Elk River, Minnesota. Elf River, Minnesota. <laughs> Elf River? Elf River? <laughs> Elk. Elk. Like Elk River. Oh, that's yeah. a lot tougher. Yeah. Elf is bad. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is it yeah. Elk River. Yeah. 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 Do you like jalapenos with your elk? Nothing. Uh, did, have you ever tried holding the microphone with one hand? <laughs> no. I can't. If I hold it with one hand, I shake like crazy. Oh, wow. All right. Greg, what do you do for work? Uh, I'm an author. Really? What have you written? Uh, my last book was a uh, memoir about college. My forthcoming book in April is a memoir about two years I spent as a uh, clubhouse attendant for a minor league baseball team. Wow, look at that. From money ball to funny ball. Look at you. Very interesting. You like that, don't you? I love it. I'm in the Writers Guild. Are you? No, sir. You're goddamn motherfucking right you aren't. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, wow, that's cool. That, uh, But you make money writing books? Yes, I'm right now living off of money I used to make as a ghostwriter. Right. Saved up there, and now I'm trying to make it until my book comes out in April. Wow. What kind of ghosts were you writing for? <laughs> a lot of, uh, like, CEO types. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> wow. All right. So uh, you haven't been on this show before, have you? Yeah, I, was, I got pulled in San Antonio last January. The reason why I ask is because I remember this. Yeah. Ghostwriting for CEOs. What's I remember up? it very clearly. How did that, did the tonight's set go better? I think tonight's set was better, yes. I think it did too. I think the autism joke, the, the, the little kitty joke was adorable at the beginning. I think a lot of people had a problem with your Mexicans eat at Taco Bell joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been out of your house, but um, they don't really do that so much. Have you ever seen a Mexican at a Taco Bell? Never. They don't even work at Taco Bell. <laughs> no. That's like a disgrace <laughs> to the family name. And you know they'll do any fucking job. So, I mean, it's really crazy that... Um, all right. So, uh, <clears throat> you've, how long have you lived here in Austin? Uh, about three years. And we're, you moved straight from Minnesota? No, I've been all over the place. I was yeah. in Montana, Virginia, Florida... What's oh some God. advice you can give me and Tony? We just moved here. Yeah. Um, have you guys been to Barton Springs yet? Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, I went there today. They have a car wash. It's called Barton Springs Car Wash. It's a great car wash. <laughs> That's the only reason I Are know I was in Barton Springs. Yeah. <laughs> Barton Springs, the pool, is uh, one oh, of the, the best spots in Austin. Is that like that oh. super long uh, free pool that you can go to? And it's like... Uh, it's yes. free right now. It'll be free, but then it'll cost money once uh, spring comes. I actually read about this. Oh, you yeah. did? Yeah. It's you really thinking about going swimming in the super <laughs> long pool? This is like Blackfish <laughs> too. <laughs> no. <laughs> it looked really cool, though. It's yeah. long, but is it wide? Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, so you go swimming in this public pool? Yeah, I go there. It's Do only people ever like dunk you and splash you? You seem like you'd be easily bullied. <laughs> uh No. All right. Well, I, if I see you there, I'm going to. I'm going to jump right Jesus. on top of you, pull one of your teeth out. Right. You know that's what I mean? It's not what you I mean. I might like it. Uh oh. Whoa, God. Jesus. What the fuck? All right. Uh, well, you have a girlfriend? Are you into guys? Is that what we're finding out right now? Oh, my God. I could be, but no. I'm, uh, I guess well, technically I'm like, an in, I'm like an incel right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Greg doesn't even know he's gay, everybody. This is exciting. We're going to be the, we're the first people to tell someone live on a show that you're gay. Cool. Have you ever messed around with a guy? Like when you were a kid, did you uh, kiss your friend's penis or anything like that? I think he's thinking about it. I Probably the gayest thing I've ever done is I was watching a movie with my friends in the basement, and neither of us... We didn't want to change out the movie, so we're like, okay, whoever can jack off and come first has to change the movie. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's not real. <laughs> it's real, dude. Are you serious? Yeah, ask my buddy Wade and Danny. The gayest part was you catching the cum in your mouth as it was coming out of them. Who won the competition, do you remember? Nobody won the you competition. Probably, you probably were. 20 seconds later, he's like, oh, a bunch of dudes are jerking off. Uh, yeah. That, oh, God. How Did old you? were you? 
Uh, 16, 17. Jesus. Wow. That Jesus is, That is Christ. gay, dude. That's You are yeah. 100% gay. That's four years <laughs> away from 22. That's true. Wow. Do you, do you and your friends talk about this now? Like, uh, do you, do I you mean, they're high school Hell friends, no, they don't talk <laughs> about it now. <laughs> yeah, I just always, uh, when the VHS is over, I just uh, go right up and put in a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Never hesitated once in my life. Yeah, why would that even come up? So wait, let me ask you this, because you said nobody won, like nobody finished. Right. Uh, but, but So how long <laughs> until you guys... Four <laughs> hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting hot in there. We to take off our clothes. Jesus, we could have watched Kill Bill twice. At the <laughs> <laughs> my, my arm is throbbing. Hey, I'll do you if you do me. Yeah. Totally not gay. My goodness, Greg. All right, what's the second gayest thing you've done? Well, I once <laughs> ate a dude's ass out. Uh, but, but it was only because the DVD was over. <laughs> so it's not gay at all. The second gears is probably hidden on you just now. Wow. Oh. What's the uh, what's the what's the um, biggest accomplishment you've ever had with the ladies? I once proposed to a girlfriend of three and a half years, and she said no. Wow. Was it a special proposal? Like, were you at a restaurant or a Thanksgiving or something big? I made a. Um, Wait. Let me let me guess. The VHS was over, and uh, <laughs> okay, go ahead. I made a uh, scavenger hunt that brought her around town, and I wrote, like, Aww. rhyming clues. And the, the final clue I, the final clue brought her into my parlor at my, oh my house, God. and there was a video camera You got there. told no at the end of a fucking scavenger hunt? Yes. <laughs> the worst part is, I thought I was safe to take a sip of water right then for sure. <laughs> You almost got me, dude. How long did the scavenger yeah, How long hunt was it? What if it was like two weeks? Like, <laughs> no, no. What lasted longer, the scavenger hunt or the jerk-off session before? About uh, the same amount of time. Wow. It got to, uh, the worst part is, is I videotaped it because I thought she might say yes. So I still have the video. You have that? I have the video of her saying Will you no. send me a copy of that? I'll send it to you. We yeah. got to put that right yeah, here. We're, we're going we're gonna to post it on the, uh, we'll post it on the Kill Tony Instagram Dude, it's account. it's pretty sad. I don't know. Oh, it, it sounds, sounds awesome. awesome. <laughs> How many of you would love to watch this sad video? Okay. Nicole just texted me. It's 4 o'clock Tuesday, April 29th. And she said that she's on her way uh, from school, and I'm doing it. I'm going to ask her to propose to me. And I got to say, I'm glad that this is something which I could prepare beforehand, because I would be too nervous to do something spontaneous. Um, so I have a scavenger hunt set up, going, bringing her around town. Not too, just up to the park and in my car. But... Um, so she's going to go on the scavenger hunt. I'm going to follow with and just try and act calm, cool, and collected. And she's going to come in here. And the last clue is going to have her turn on the lights. And um, there's a, uh, in Lily's, her favorite rose, it says, marry me. Um, it smells pretty good in here. And it's got all these lights and stuff. And um, it looks like, it doesn't look great, but it's the really... Pretty good, all things considered. So I'm going to set up the camera here, and um, we're going to see how it goes. So this could be a video which um, which nobody sees, or this could be a video which everybody sees. Either way, well, one way is good, the other way is bad. So we'll see. So it's now Wednesday, April 30th, I think. And um, it's the day after I proposed. And Nicole, she 
As you saw in the video, she took a while. She, we embraced, and um, she didn't really have an answer there. So what she wound up doing is she took the list of 1,225 things that I loved about her, and she took the ring, and she took a picture of the flowers that said marry me on the floor. And she went over to her mom's place by herself to mull things over. Are you going to read that whole thing? Yeah. There's a lot of different things in there. <laughs> Just so you know. Okay. It's like 35 pages. I mean, sometimes, sometimes these things just write themselves. Wow. wow. Do you still talk to her? No, we have not talked That's since then. That's what she said. <laughs> All right. Uh, he started with no, but... Uh, uh, wow. Oh, I see. Um, uh, did you guys break up immediately after that, or did you kind of, like, fizzle out after that? I was moving, and this is, like, my last-ditch effort. Like, baby, come with me. And uh, so we lived together for, like, two weeks after she said no. Wow. And then Awkward. Was yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. Totally not going to be sad or anything. <laughs> Are right. you ever going to do that again? Propose to somebody? Yeah. I hope so. Oh, God. Wow, look at that. Oh, look at the lonely <laughs> women in the audience. <laughs> like, oh, I'll go on a scavenger <laughs> hunt. <laughs> My God. Did Drake. you keep the ring? <laughs> I was so poor, I borrowed the ring from her mom who just got divorced. Oh. Jesus so I just gave Christ. it right back to her. <laughs> My God. <laughs> what a loser. You borrow the ring from her mom? No wonder she said no. She probably recognized the ring. Probably smelled like her dad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Greg. Well, this has been a fun interview. It's fun to have a, a new, uh, even though you've been on this show once in San Antonio, it's fun to have a stranger on you got us back to uh talking to someone we don't know that much about in front of a live audience so thank you so much greg larson everybody there he goes he's on twitter at the greg larson christy bellich is christy bellich yeah there's Zach Bogus. Zach, if you want to move that stool back a few feet and maybe towards the keyboard. Hey, Toe, can you give him my email address? Look at Zach Bogus I up here. He sends that, sent that video in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it says it here all the way from Sunbury, Ohio. Your next comedian goes by the name of Trevor Williams. Trevor Williams. Sunbury. I know Sunbury. Yeah, I know Sunbury, too. My, my aunt and uncle live there. Oh, wow. Here he comes. You can almost hear his heart beating from here. The anticipation of knowing your name has been called. Here he is, Trevor Williams, everybody. Hello. Um, a little bit about me. When I was six years old, I walked in on my parents having sex for the first time. Like my first time catching them. And I walk in and my dad just, he's on top of my mom and he looks over and he's like, can't you knock? And I, from that point on, I learned, no, knock before you walk in. By far the most memorable Easter of my life. And years later, my dad walked in on me masturbating as a teen. And he was like, what the fuck, dude? I knocked. And I was like, I know, I heard you. But I was close. Here's a towel. I came on my dad. I didn't. The towels for the cum. I don't have distance like that. I'm joking. A little bit extra about me. I, Arnold Schwarzenegger is like one of my favorite actors ever. I think Total Recall is criminally underrated. My only gripe with the guy is that in all of his movies, no one ever brings up the goddamn accent. Not once, like in any of his films. And honestly, it has to be like central to the plot line, but can't someone at some point be like, hey man, where are you from? <laughs> I could just use one scene in The Terminator where they're like building the robot and the Whoa, whoa, Jesus, there it is. I almost forgot the bear was there. All the way from 6th Street. <laughs> they love you, Trevor, look at that. They are, either that or they're clapping for the bear, I don't know. <laughs> 
Uh, welcome to the show. Look at you. Yes. Talk about magician energies. You're yes. the guy. Sunbury, Ohio, huh? Yes. You drive here? I did not. Live here now. Oh, you moved here. I drove here originally, though, like 20 hours straight. Okay. Shot. Hell yeah. Yeah. So square up to the audience a little bit so yeah. that they Sorry. can see you there. Yes. It's good. It's yeah. good. Trevor, no. you have a good look to you. You're uh, Han Solo's son, right? I am Kylo Ren, yes. There you go. You get Those that a Keanu lot? vibes as well, yes. Like they what fought. ethnicity are you? That was my next. I was going to say I usually get Asian if someone's African American or Hispanic it's if they're true. white. It's you look like an Asian woman with a mustache, which is very rare. I grow the mustache for less womanly vibes, but I guess it kind of. I know what that's like. Trust yeah. me, I know what that's like. Uh, so, how long have you lived in Austin? About three years now. Everybody's Christ, lived here for three, three years. years. Yeah. Yeah. It appears as if there was another bum rush of people. Before, perhaps uh, another big podcaster moved here three years ago. Uh, so, Trevor, what have you been doing? What do you do for a living? I just got a job with the state at the start of last year. Great benefits. It's incredible. The state of what? Depression? It's, it's sending me there. No, the yeah. great state of Texas. What do you do for the state of Texas? Uh, I help put together courses for attorneys. Oh, wow. You're yeah. that guy? Yeah, I'm that guy. That they put in charge of that? The books and stuff. I do an okay job. Okay. Hell yeah. Why Austin? What made you come out here? Because I, I, I know Sunbury pretty well. My aunt and my uncle uh, live there, grew up there a lot. Uh, nothing out there. A bunch of... There's an outlet mall now, so oh, there's that's an kind mall. of slanderous. A lot of cows, a lot of farms. Yes, a lot of cows and farms. But uh, I moved here to do comedy, actually, before it was like cool, too. So you've been doing that for a few years now? Yeah. I okay. actually was at the Dallas show last year. You were on the show? Yes. Wow. So still nobody that hasn't been on this show before this episode. That's incredible. Uh, let me ask you this, because you have a real look to you. You know this. Uh, you have any special skills or talents that we would find interesting? I don't play instruments. Last uh -huh. time we asked that, yeah. I, I brought up that I could dunk. Uh huh. And you had me do a jumping contest. Really? Yes. Uh, I got beat, but I didn't get a rebuttal, so that wasn't fair. Who, who out-jumped you? Uh... Jeremiah? No. <laughs> Joel? A guy at the end of the show. Oh, just a human Big, being. Big, tall, yeah. Yeah. This is good. Wow. Other adjectives. You were really scarred from this experience. You yeah. don't even remember it. Yeah. You want to try jumping again? Have you, have you improved <sighs> your... Uh, I, I, have a, I don't have any other fucking talents. I can do the worm. I don't want to do the worm either. Why do I... This is just embarrassing. I don't know. How many of you want to see this guy do the worm, huh? No better time than during a global pandemic than to have a guy r roll around on the floor. Fair enough. I'll give the people what they want. Here he is. Doing, can we get a little worm music for my friend here? Uh, here he is doing the, the saddest worm you've ever seen. <laughs> wow. This is the dumbest show of all time. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. Oh, incredible. <laughs> that was a pretty good worm, though. John? I thought you said war music, not worm music. <laughs> I was like, give me some war drums. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering. I was like, that's an interesting worm music. Oh, my God. By the way, your Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, joke, I love that. That's a good uh, point. That's a great the best point. Part. That's why I was trying to get there. Okay, what's the ending to the Arnold joke? So the, the guy in charge of communications, he's putting Arnold together, and he's like, hey, guys, you know what would be awesome if we gave this guy a Nazi accent? Ha, 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 ha. How about some big, sexy muscles, too? What? I don't know. So <laughs> Whoa, Fuck. an audible boo for the first time me, here I, I tonight. That's incredible. The, ah, you really okay. built up the excitement of that punchline. and then that was It appears as though you didn't, never finished writing the joke. Rookie mistake. I love it. What would, we, what would we be surprised to find out about you? Something we haven't covered on your other appearance here. How are you with the ladies? You seem like a ladies. I always assume people that look like the top half of a centaur do good with... Yeah. Uh, it works. Do yeah. good with the ladies. Adam Driver's super in right now. You're what? Adam Driver is super in right now. Right. Looking like people and, like that. You're like, like Adam that. Driver, except you're more like Uber Driver. I was. Last time we did this, actually, that was my profession. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, full circle. Nice. Indeed. Uh, but how about now? So, people are into Adam Driver. So, what's happening with you? I've um, actually been in a relationship for, like, most of the time I've yeah. been here. But What does she do? She works for Favor. What's that? It's like Uber Eats, but... 
Austin and Texas specifically. Wow. And you can get more that. shit though. Red Band yeah, is hard again. This right Red, here. Red Band's hard as a rock. Um, wow, incredible. Well, Trevor, um, this has been a fun interview. I guess I'm trying to figure out if there's anything that I'm missing here. I just don't know. You have any special sexual moves in the bedroom on your girlfriend? <laughs> the worm. That you do? Um, yeah, I yeah. pride myself on like not using my fingers when I go down. I think that's kind of like tacky. When you go down well. on your girlfriend? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean not use your fingers? Like, what do you what do you do like, with your hands? Just keep them to the side, like. <laughs> Like you're crucified or something well, like how that? Do you, how do you get in there? Do you just blow <laughs> real hard, real fast? It depends what my position is, but I mean... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Hands can do <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> you think that's how it oh, works? I mean, if you've got, you got to spread it apart, like what do you do? Just blow real hard into it until it opens up and then is push she your e- face Is she ever I impressed? I, I, is she ever like, I can't believe you can do that with no hands like that? I guess I should. I should, could be more specific, like... Fe- like Oh, you don't do the the fingering part. The fingering, yeah. Ah. I mean, that's Finger. not that's not that crazy. It's not that crazy. You just asked me for a unique skill. I just, the first thing that came to mind. Is there anything else? I mean, is there anything else that comes to your mind? Is there any anything that uh, anything? What's well, the, are you interested? What, I don't, I'm what's the noise that you make when you have an orgasm? <laughs> okay, I'm done, Tony. What? Okay, I'm done, Tony. Oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> you it. son of a bitch! I Who knew says it. that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Trevor, fun to have you on. Congratulations. Trevor Williams, everybody. There Thank he you goes. <laughs> All right. My work is done here. Here we go. It's that part of the show where, if one's available, I'm going to bring up another regular. How about that, huh, guys? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this guy uh, famously... A great roaster, unbelievable comedian. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. David Lucas, everybody. Here he is. Come on, David Lucas, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, what's up, y'all? I had uh, COVID like a month ago. Uh, I lost my smell and taste. I actually got my taste back eating pussy. Uh, I, I knew I got my taste back when I started tasting pennies. That's how you know you eat pussy, when it tastes like spare change. But I actually lost my smell and taste during the worst week possible. I lost that shit during Thanksgiving. As a fat guy, I damn near had a heart attack. You know what I'm saying? I was like, nigga, give me the pneumonia. I was like... Like, I lost my smelling taste for Thanksgiving. I finally got to experience my first white Thanksgiving. <laughs> I couldn't taste a fucking thing. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, this is what it tastes like in the suburbs on Turkey Day. All right. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. There he is. David Lucas. Welcome back. Yeah, Lost man. his smell and his taste and gained 80 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Spent his lockdown locked in the refrigerator. Hey, <laughs> Tony, I actually heard you was laying naked at the bottom of a chimney waiting for Santa to come down. Okay, why would I, why would I do that? <laughs> you know why you was doing it. <laughs> why, would I, why would I lay naked waiting for Santa Claus? You was trying to give him a candy cane. <laughs> My God. Jesus. <laughs> Look at David Lucas, everyone. Everything really is bigger in Texas. Look at this. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, you got you 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 got COVID right before we just recorded our last four episodes. So like it just you just disappeared off the show for like oh, two yeah, months. Yeah. It looked like I wasn't on that motherfucker. Yeah. Hell yeah. So what's been going on, David? How are you? Shit. Uh, trying to meet some women out here. Yeah. How's how's that going? <laughs> it sucks, bro. Tinder is a bitch out here, bro. Is it? Why? I paid $30 for the extra swipes and everything. You did? You pay extra money? Yeah, uh, yeah. Unlimited swipes and tell you when a bitch like you. Because, like, like, I don't know how to meet white women in Austin. Like, they, they, they kind of liberal, but they also, like, voted for Trump and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, I, I don't, like, you know, in LA, you know how to approach a white girl. Like, hey, you want to go to Whole Foods and get a smoothie? But... <laughs> <laughs> So you're here at Antone's. This is yeah. the this is the home of the blues. Hell yeah, our our buddy owns this, right? 
Yep. Yeah, damn right. My boy Keys on the keys. Yeah. This band is so, fire, dog. God damn. David got excited when he found out it was the home of the blues until he found out it wasn't the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that. Ebony and Ivory. Tony just wants to be the first gay mayor of Austin. Oh, come on. I'm pretty sure the mayor of Austin <laughs> that they have right now is gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see that? I keep up on my local politics. Yes. Tony fly back to L.A. every Thursday to get his ass bleached. <laughs> what? Why would, I do that? Why would I do that when I can easily get my ass bleached here? Right, right. <laughs> you look like Hootie ate a blowfish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. We back on this. We got a live audience. God damn. It's I ain't did this shit in like nine months, bro. God damn. I miss, it's I miss uh, roasting this cuck hole. Yeah. Wow. Well. It's, been, it's good to have you back since you've been uh, letting cats poop on your head. <laughs> <laughs> it's like someone dumped a fucking litter box on you before you came on stage. Hey, Tony only played T-ball so he could do the ass pats at the end of a game. Oh. <laughs> Why would I even play T-ball in 30 years? Good game, good game. Tony still do that shit at the grocery store. Like, good game, good game. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so uh you've actually made changes to your diet recently yeah my right? trainer's here where he at my boy kane over here my trainer's here dog you know what i'm saying he gonna get me into shape so tony can't say no more fat jokes that's right <laughs> looks like your trainer has a lot of work to do <laughs> he's not gonna put you on his resume for a while we go <laughs> rabbit are you serious <laughs> this motherfucker used brisket oil as cologne <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Tony, you're going to need a hypnotherapist to get you out of being gay. Why would I, why would I need a hypnotherapist? He's going to uh, wave a rubber vagina in your face and tell you to fall asleep. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to need a broken hypnotherapist <laughs> carrying around all that weight. I love you tried to wear a black shirt to blend in with the background <laughs> and everything. Oh, no, it's, I'm not that big. It's just the curtain, everybody. <laughs> hey, Tony's skinny ass look like a microphone stand. Motherfucker started walking up to you to do they minute. <laughs> Son of a bitch. So, tell these people about the dietary uh, changes that you've made. Uh, shit, that nigga cut out carbs. I'm sad as a motherfucker. All my favorite shit got carbs in it. Yes, it does. But now you're uh, like eating chicken, right? Like you yeah, used to yeah, be I just... eat meat now. Yeah, I eat meat now. How can I be in Texas and not eat meat? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I ate uh, beef for the first time the other day in four years. Yeah, when they told David that uh, Kenny Rogers has performed here, he started sweating. <laughs> <laughs> His stomach started growling. They called Tony at uh, the barbecue restaurant smuggling sausages in his ass. <laughs> The jalapeno kind. <laughs> Why the fuck would you say that about me? <laughs> they were like, sir, you don't need a to-go box? He was like, no, nah, I got it. <laughs> and you're saying what? I put it in my butt? Yeah, you just sat on it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> How'd you know that I did that? <laughs> it's fun, David. So what else? What, what else in Texas? What else excites you about being here? Uh, shit, I'm about to try to wrestle the Longhorn. Yeah? I want to wrestle the Longhorn, dog. Y'all wow. know I like wrestling. If you Has follow. anyone walked up to you and tried to tip you when you're standing outside? Why? Because you look like and a pour cow. you out. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone tried to milk you? <laughs> I beat somebody's ass, bro. Fuck that. I do jokes, but I can fight. Mm. Hmm. Nah, I'm going to go fishing this week. So if anybody got an extra pole, I'm trying to do some bass fishing or whatever bite right now. Wow. So, yeah, and if perk, anyone has yeah. an extra pole, I want to shove it in my booty hole. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, to catch what you want, we need a different kind of bait. <laughs> Tony got a shit, a shit scented air freshener in his car. <laughs> what the fuck? To remind you of your bedroom. What? Why would he say these things about me? <laughs> I give you an opportunity to be a star. <laughs> I, I, all I do is lift you up, and that's not easy to do. <laughs> This motherfucker. <laughs> what else, David? What have you eaten today? Let's go through a day in the life of... Uh, Shit, earlier I had a, a, a bone-in beef rib. Me and William shared that motherfucker. Wow, bone-in. Yeah. My goodness. Sounds, sounds amazing. I almost put that bitch back when I saw the price. I was like, God. How much was it? $30 for a piece of meat. 
Wow, look at that. That's how much you spend on extra swipes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a swipe's worth of beef. <laughs> So shit, I had a, a bone in, uh yeah, bone in rib, a beef sausage, uh some smoked turkey, and uh What about lunch? And some brisk that was lunch. Oh. It wasn't even smoked turkey until he rolled it in papers and uh <laughs> read it. Yeah, and then uh, you know, had some uh barbecue upstairs. Have you tried any exotic foods since being here? I'm a uh, I fuck with an ostrich burger or some shit like that. Or some elk. Huh. Yeah? yeah? Have you done it since being here? I had ostrich before. Auschwitz? Ostrich. Uh, Auschwitz. Oh, wow. Come on, man. I got a, uh, like, you know, like, I was <laughs> raised in the suburbs, but I'm, like, only. <laughs> I don't know. Red band. Right. Oh, my God. I can't say some words, dog. <laughs> Auschwitz. If I didn't grow up saying that shit, I can't really say it like that. Like, Who the fuck eats Auschwitz? <laughs> Ostrich. However you say it, ostrich. Wow. What was it? What did that taste like? Gamey. Yeah. Yeah. My Muscular. God. It was lean as hell. Damn. Big flightless bird. Wow. Yeah. What part of the ostrich did you eat? Probably the ass. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and now, have you tried out uh, Whataburger yet? That's a big thing. No, nah, I did uh, Pete Terry's. Wow, P. Terry's. P. Terry's place goes crazy. Yeah, they P. Soak. Terry's good as a mug. Is it good? They that shit better than In and Out. Yeah. How about uh, oh, anything's better than In and Out? How about the, Terry Blacks? Have you tried Terry? That's what Blacks? we ate at the day. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was hella Asians. I didn't know if I wanted to eat there. I was like, "What these motherfuckers know about barbecue?" Oh, Asians know about. No, barbecue. they know. Have you ever had uh, Korean fried chicken? That's not barbecue. It is when you put barbecue sauce on it. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Look at this. this Red is like man a- put barbecue sauce on a mattress and called it. <laughs> this is barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what I, else, David? What else has been happening? Another solid shit, set. Uh, it's yeah. great to see you in front of an audience Hell again. Yeah, you know, we, we kept the show going during the pandemic to keep, maybe keep some people sane, keep ourselves sane, whoever wanted it, whoever yeah. – something for the – for people that hate us, to yeah. love to hate, uh, to enjoy. Yeah, and it just made us crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. uh, but oh, yeah. uh, it, de- it definitely, you know, you're a real stand-up comedian. It yeah. affected, without a doubt, your timing and Absolutely. beats, not yeah. having an audience yeah. and doing things over video and with no audience in the room. And here you are right back. And yeah, it's man. been 10 minutes. The crowd's been enjoying themselves. Thank God. Thank and God. You're right back at it. Yeah. But, uh... Thank y'all, thank y'all. So for everybody who follow us, we're recording another Brothers and Cursor this week, uh, Austin edition, so y'all have had that. Uh, what else? The Patreon. Jesus, what brothers. are you doing, just plugging shit? Yeah, you said what I've been doing. <laughs> I, got, I, got my, uh, I got my new YouTube show called The Fat Pessimist. Oh, okay. So it's basically right. me being pessimistic about all type of and like, fat. Everything. Don't forget about fat. Yeah, this motherfucker. <laughs> it's not just <laughs> you. Just you just mentioned Jesus Christ, sir. I bet That's you what? won't fight me. Yeah, Jesus exactly. Christ. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's the same guy that hates Jeremiah. Yeah, but wow. I beat his ass. Who would guess? That's a, a lot difference. of a lot of angry energy. <laughs> did you sign up, sir? That keeps yelling things. Yeah, you did. I hope you don't get up, bitch. Oh, I hope he does. All right. Oh, man. I hate it when white guys say things sort of black <laughs> to, like, connect. He wanted to say, I fuck with you, my knee. <laughs> you know? I appreciate you, bro. All right. There you go. That's all it takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, David, you did it again. Absolute yes, fun stuff. How about a hand for David Lucas, everybody? Come on. Here's Zach Bogus. Let's get back to this bucket, shall we? All right. All right. I'm positive it's this person's first time on the show. I would remember this name if I saw it before. Put your hands together for Nakia Marrero. Marrero. Nakia. Nasia. Or Nakia Marrero. 
Oh, do we have a female? Is this a female? I do believe so. Yeah. Here she comes, everybody. She's going to go that way. Here it is, our first lady of the night. Nakia Marrero. <laughs> Make some noise for Nakia, everybody. Or second lady of the night. <laughs> All right. Well, my name is Nasia, but that was, that was a good start. The first white guy sing my name right. Usually they just call me Gold Digger, so that was pretty good. At least I, has my time already started? Fuck. All right, so I was actually raised in a very strict household, all right? Back in Portugal, my dad used to beat my ass up. Imagine Mike Tyson fighting Sofia Vergara, okay? That's how it was. Yeah, my mom was just standing in the back like, a coach stands outside a boxing ring. She would just go like this. <sighs> Don't get her face. Do more body work. Don't get her face. I see some of you guys look concerned. Guys, it's all right. I'm not very smart, but I can take a punch, all right? My mom used to call me shitty little piggy. Literally translated from Portuguese. <sighs> Porquinha merda. Yeah. She used to go like this, who's your shitty little piggy? Who's your shitty little piggy? And I would go, me, mommy, I am your shitty little piggy. No wonder I always dated abusive men. They would tell me shit like, you're a fucking bitch. And I would go, oh, he's going to propose to me soon. There it is, Nasia, everybody. Put your hands together for Nasia. Here she is. We're going to talk with you now, Nasia. All right. Oh, Welcome fuck. to the show. Thank you. I was ready to run away, but... Good wow. Thing you told me that. You're really from Portugal. Yes, sir, I am. How long have you lived here in Austin, Texas? Since March. What made you move here? My husband. He's working here. Oh, wow. Husband, yeah. huh? All right. That's all the time we had for Nasia. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, everybody. I'm kidding. <laughs> what does your husband do? He works for the government. He works for the government. Huh? Guys, how do you think I got a green card? Oh, yeah, face the audience. Take a step back so the audience can see you, so that you can square up to them. No, take the microphone, the microphone with you. Take the microphone with you. I know you're used to just using your looks for everything, but you're going to have to That's communicate. That's what's up. That's what's up. You're you going to have to communicate. How long have you been married for? I've been married since I'm 21. Since you're 21? Yeah. Are you I'm 21 now? 27. Wow. So six years was I've the answer to the question. I've been working hard for that green card. That's incredible. You know... And you've only lived... Where was your husband at? Portugal with you? Is he no, we met in Norway, actually. Wow, look at yeah. that. And you found out he lives in America and you fell in I love. I was like, fuck, I got to work on that. Hell he was yeah. the only American in Norway, you know? And now, he's from Arkansas, what? so look at my look. Wow, wow, look at that. Incredible. What does he do for the government? I cannot tell. Wow. Sorry. My goodness. Very cool. That's, that's some interesting stuff. What do you do? What, uh, what department store do you spray perfume on people at? Macy's. <laughs> Dude, I'm living, look at me. I'm living that Orange County life. You know what I mean? What is it? What do you do for work? I don't do shit. Really? I mean, I do comedy. I'm trying my best, you know? Yeah. How long, have you, how long have you been uh, trying? I've been trying, actually. Um, I started when I was 21 in Norway, and then I, did a, I had a break for three years. This is the first time in three years. Wow, congratulations. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, does your husband tell you that you're funny? Uh, he has to, yeah, he has to. Right. You guys still, like, sexually active, or what do you do? You just... No, it's been a few years. Is that true? Yeah, that's what happens when you get married, dude. That's Is what that... happens. Wait, but hold on a second. Is... You guys haven't had sex in years? Or are you joking? Is this one of those wacky Portuguese jokes? Ne next, next question. Next question. Next question. <laughs> wow. Well, that's fun. Um, so you, when's, when's the last time you did have a job? In uh, Portugal, what did you do, like pick no, apples or something? I was a something? flight attendant. I was a flight attendant before. You were a flight attendant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, what airline? I know it wasn't Virgin. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> what airline did you work for? At least I don't look like a virgin. What airline did you work Etihad. for? Etihad. Etihad is in the Middle East, in Abu Dhabi. Oh, okay. I know that one. I'm sure Absolutely. you do. They had a, ma they had a major... Major air disaster, the Etihad air disaster. It's you a five-star airline, but yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of five-star things. The fucking, the, fucking, uh, the Red Lobster in El Paso said yeah. five yeah. stars, too. Sure. <laughs> Interesting. Anything crazy ever happened to you when you were an airline attendant? A lot of crazy shit happened to me. Yeah, like what? 
Like, once we thought we had a terrorist on board. Wow. But then he just ended up calling me Brazilian, and I'm Portuguese, so that's quite a terroristic act. You um, hate Brazilians. Portu Portuguese people hate Brazilians. No, no, we don't. Well, I mean, we speak the same language, but we're, like, in the other side of the world, so it doesn't really make sense. You know what I mean? Sort of. I, mean, I don't really pay attention to what languages speak, because I'm an yeah. American, the greatest country in the world. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, we just sit around talking, waiting for the best people from the other countries to move here. Yeah. If they have a chance From the to. other shit countries, right? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, so that's fun. You have any special skills or talents? You seem like the kind of young lady that uh, that's into a. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm taking your girlfriend for a glass of wine. Wait, what? I heard she's feeling quite alone here in Texas. So we had a few friends in common, and we were talking about taking her for a glass of wine. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so confused. Say that again. You don't have a girlfriend? Yeah, I do. Go ahead. Okay. She's not feeling alone here in Texas. No. No? Why would she feel alone? Because she's with you. Oh, it was a roast joke. Jesus. Sorry, this, is not, this is not my the style. The setup was what longer than a flight fuck? from Portugal. <laughs> my God. <laughs> Jesus, Nasia. Have you ever thought about working with puppets, perhaps? Or, uh, Jesus fucking Sorry. Christ. Oh, my God. All right. I was like, what do I have to edit here? I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to take your girl for a glass of wine, wine because she alone. She's been... <laughs> like, oh, what? That is a racist accent. We have mutual friends. Yeah, that's a racist accent, dude. That sounds like a Mexican guy. That's not a racist accent. It is. It is. What's your least favorite race? I don't, ha I, I don't have one. You don't have one? Be careful because there's some blacks around you. <laughs> I don't have one. Okay. What's your favorite race? White people. <laughs> Anybody who gets me a fucking green card. How do you not have a green card yet? What's happening? No, I do. I do, I do have one. Oh. That's why I'm here. Oh, okay. I mean, it's been it. 10 years, dude. If I didn't have a, card in t a green card in 10 years, it would be very sad. Very interesting. How long do you have to wait until you, you, know, you could divorce the guy and keep your green card? It's a good question. That's a good question that I, I would like to know. Anybody? <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Uh, how about special skills or talents? Anything you like? Uh, you have like a you like a champion of something. You trained at something when you were younger. You have a trophy for anything. You ever win anything? A competition? Yeah, I'm very good tricking white guys into marrying my ass. I'm very okay. Good at that. Well, that, let's uh, let's let's skip one of these. Uh, let's just tell the truth here. Do you have any special skills or talents? <laughs> Can you perhaps do the worm or something like that? But, no, I, can't, I don't have anything. I mean, I can cook. I'll make you a meal. Really? What can you cook? Anything. I'm a very, I used to be a chef. How are you, good at, how are you at cleaning? <laughs> well, I'm Latina, so I guess good. I guess good. Red band. I guess She's good. great at cleaning. Are you kidding me? So Portuguese housewife. I see you. Cl you clearly need some help. I see that. No, Maybe yeah, take a I'm, shower I'm good. first. Oh, she talked to some mutual friend. Oh. I love it. Well, Nasia, so this is your return to doing stand-up in three years, right? Yeah, yes. You took three years off. You did it for what? Three years before that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Awesome. You well, think you're going to do it again? Yeah, of course. Oh, perfect. Well, I'll tell you this. It's, this is one of the funniest performances by a female comedian I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, what, what's your uh, OnlyFans? Oh, come on. Red oh, band. I'm sorry. Red band. <laughs> You guys want to all do it together? One, two, three. Red band. Why did I do this time? All right. Nasia Marrero, everybody. There she goes. Nasia. She's at Nasia underscore Marrero. Wow. I hear your, I hear your girlfriend very alone. Yeah, that kind of freaked me out for a second. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. Like, what What's is happening on? here? Maybe she knows I, something I don't. I hate Brazilian women. They have the best butt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys having fun out there? Anything can happen. These people, they drive. They come from all around. Who knows? Make some noise for Chris Buchanan, everybody. Your, your next comedian here, live from Antone's nightclub. Almost said comedy club. There he comes. Here comes Chris Buchanan. Nice long strides. Working his way to the stage. 
Here he is, Chris Buchanan, everybody. Come on, make some noise for Chris. Hello, everybody. What's up? Um, I'm 21 years old. Um, I was homeschooled, and uh, I'm a single dad. Like, uh, probably. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I'm not dad. I, um, I am single, though. My ex-girlfriend, she posted on her story about nine months ago after the breakup. Um, a picture of a trash can, and she titled it hashtag my ex, hurtful, you know? But the problem is then she kept on sleeping with me after the breakup, and I feel like at that point, I'm no longer trash. You know, I'm compost. That's one step up, yeah. She threw me in the yard, in the back pit, also opening up the hole once every two or three weeks to stir shit up again, you know? Yeah, You know, the, my favorite part about that is that by her calling me trash and sleeping with me, quasi calling herself a cum dumpster. Yeah. And I, I like that word because it still feels like I'm sinning when I say it. You know? Yeah. Thank you. Woo! Hell yeah. There he is, Chris Buchanan. Yes, sir. Chris, I got here early today. I got here at, I think it was like uh, 530 I was here earlier like that. than that. And, and you, yeah. you noticed it too? He was the first one here, yeah. You were the first person outside. Amen. It's incredible. Holy shit, you're missing a tooth. Yes, sir. Hey. Wow, this is the guy. My man. <laughs> we found the guy. I like your fucking style, Chris. Thank you. 21, hey, huh? Is that one of your baby teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Tie it to a balloon. I love it. You know what the best part of that is? Is that the whole time he's probably like, man, I hope they don't notice my tooth's missing. (laughs) I'm just like, oh, my God. Oh, shit. I love it. No, is that a style thing? Is that in right now? Pick the best season to go toothless ever. Yeah, what happened there? Um, Well... Pulled it out six months ago, and uh, why'd you pull? You pulled it out yourself. You're, you're not supposed to do that yeah. with adult teeth. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Tony, I put some floss around the doorknob, and uh, you know what I mean. I was bored yeah. one day. Oh uh, shit! Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, the gold one just hasn't grown back in yet, so I don't know. Incredible. What's happening. Twenty-one uh, years old, amen. missing a tooth. This Wait, is the why'd most... you pull it out though? Ah, you know. Ah. <laughs> That's not style. a thing. <laughs> Yeah, homeschooled. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny guy. <laughs> I knocked over Ryan J. Eb out there. Uh, wow, incredible. So you're not really going to tell us what happened to the tooth, huh? No, it's just like never. We have a better chance of finding out one of Nasia's special <laughs> skills or talents. <laughs> I'll just tell you, I'll never go down on a woman who only does Kegel at the gym. Wow, yeah. look at that. Well, yeah. my goodness. Let me ask you this. When you go down on girls, do you ever use your hands? <laughs> I just I just right through the tooth with them. Oh, like wow. That. Yeah. I, I, that might actually work. I could mm-hmm. see how that might actually uh, work. So you're 21 years old. Yes, sir. From Texas? I lived all over. How? How did you live <laughs> all over? <laughs> well, my uh, my dad's a pilot, and that's why I was always like, Going around, getting fired, and getting new jobs and shit. Look at that. Yeah. How long have you been here? About five years. Oh, five okay. Years. Yeah. My goodness. So you moved a lot when you were a kid. Yeah. Five years all here in Austin, Texas? Yeah, um, Lago Vista, and now I live like 10 minutes north of here. What, Pflugerville? Um, no, it's called Jollyville. Anderson, oh, I thought, yeah. I thought Pflugerville because of the old... Uh, yeah. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? What? That's Georgetown. <laughs> That's Georgetown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better not be God. talking shit about Pflugerville. Uh oh, <laughs> someone's representing his new hood over here. Yeah. Every time I've gone to the Pflugerville skate park, somebody has offered me hard drugs. Really? <laughs> Every time. <laughs> yeah. You go to skate wow. parks a lot? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. What are you, uh, rollerblades? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's my brother. So you're 21 years old. What are, what are you into? You like twitching or anything like that? <laughs> yeah. or? What are the kids um, doing nowadays? I'm an old. We're old men now. Yeah, dude, just skate parks, open mics. That's kind of a thing, you know. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. Hundred percent, bro. That's <laughs> just like my fucking lifestyle, dude. <laughs> so, are you gonna get your tooth fixed or? Uh, eventually, yeah. Oh, eventually. Yeah. I mean, that's something. You major. have to realize yeah. how compelling this is to us. We're from Los Angeles, where not having a tooth is like having uh, sexual allegations against you. Yeah. Like your, cur- <laughs> you don't go out. Your career stops. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but not you. You're just out here, first guy to show up, just first in line. What's up? Let's do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I've it's waited a, a long time to do an impression of a guy missing a tooth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what do you think? What's the move here? Do you um, know? Do you have a dentist? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. It's just um, I have to. I actually did get surgery on it because it was like there was like a thing in my sinuses, and I just basically I have to wait another like oh, several months. Oh, you've been months. partying a little bit too much. Huh? <laughs> yeah. What'd you do? Damn. Um, now that's a drip. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you do? How do you how do you mess up your nasal passages? Oh, it was just because like the tooth like it actually broke skateboarding like right. a long time ago and then i broke it again skateboarding well That's look at that I, i'd be bragging but about that if i was a yeah. skateboarder <laughs> instead it took us 10 minutes to get it out of you yeah. <laughs> jesus christ amen so why do you you have to wait now or is this just uh he's got to get an implant or yeah. Something like that. yeah yeah one of those screw yeah, right it's in. the worst yeah yeah uh yeah. Wow. What else about you? What else would we be interested to know? Fun fact about Chris Buchanan. Um, well, you did my show at Shakespeare's on this oh, past... Oh, that was your show? Yeah. Oh, I had no idea. That's oh, so sure. cool. And oh, I did meet you there. Yeah. Well, I, I could swear you had all your teeth then. I'm pretty sure I had my mask on. Oh, oh that's right. what it was. Wow. He has a, he has a mask. That's that, why. He has a mask. Think about it. It has a smiling face with all the teeth. Right. Yeah. Hey, Amen. That's true. <laughs> It's incredible. Oh, God. Hell yeah. No. I mean, that makes sense. I've done, uh, I've swung in through a few places here just trying to uh, yeah. test out some doofy local jokes. Yeah, what's a, what's a, what's a good spot to go to? I, I mean, know. really, just anywhere that has a spot. You yeah. know what I mean? It's fun. I am, you know, I'm basically a fucking god here in Austin, Texas. No. So, you know what I mean? I, I could roll into a music open mic and be like, get off the stage, you losers, and then go up there and do dick jokes. But, uh, yeah, so it's fun. Um, yeah, I did your show. What else other than your show? Um, I have my private pilot's license. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Fun. How long have you had that for? Um, about two years now. And I haven't you... been doing it recently. Why is that? Um, I You're missing wanted... a tooth. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> no too, co- too loud of a whistle when he's yeah. flying. No co-pilot wants to be no. like, your controls. Real shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> um... Wow. Yeah, Tony's trying to become a pilot right now. You've gotten a couple <laughs> flights. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Ball and Bill Burr. Yeah. yeah, it's true. It's true. Getting a couple mm-hmm. flights in. Uh, you, you said your father's a pilot? Yeah. What airline? Southwest. Whoa, oh, Jesus. Yeah. But I now like I know why you don't have a dentist. <laughs> no. that's, that's where he gets his comedy from. <laughs> no, Southwest is great. That's incredible. I love Southwest. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. And uh, this ex of yours, she really did that? She said you're a trash can? Uh, call me trash, yeah. Just like that whole like thing we're on Twitter, all men are trash. Uh, you know, have you seen that like no. popular hashtag or whatever? No. Yeah. I thought it was unique. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that's incredible. Yeah. My goodness. Has anyone ever told you you look like Justin Timberlake if you got hit in the head by a shovel? <laughs> that's a new one. A, um, some people say I look like um, knockoff Blake Griffin. Yeah, <laughs> I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. <laughs> Blake Griffin, if he got an injury that he would take care of in 20 minutes. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> He's like, my tooth's what? <laughs> All right. Okay. Chris Buchanan, uh, you were the first one here, and uh, the bucket of destiny has a wild way of working, and you got up tonight. Chris Buchanan, oh, yeah. everybody. Chris Buchanan. Let's get back to the bucket again. This is fun. Isn't it fun? Yeah, I miss this. We just have a ton of pieces of paper in here. We're back. Okay. Oh, yeah. A lot of fun here tonight with the female comedians, and there's another one coming at you right now. Austin, Texas, put your hands together for Brittany Ledesma. Brittany Ledesma. Hey. Here she is. She's coming from the audience. From the audience. It is the comedy stylings of Brittany Ledesma. One more time for Brittany, everyone. Oh, thank y'all. I'm half gay, I'm half Mexican, but I do prefer to only be identified as a dumb bitch. That's my favorite gender neutral noun, pronoun. My sister is a cunt. She was born that way. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, I'm bisexual, but I don't know if I can say that that often because I swear I've tasted my own pussy more than other bitches. 
it's just because I'm better tasting than most, though. <laughs> like, I'm more like a wild-caught salmon, while others tend to be like tilapia from the frozen aisle. It's just there and affordable. It's not that great. I had my most mature relationship this year, though. He worked for IBM, and I have IBS, so I thought it was meant to be. <laughs> Turns out, me shitting myself and him working for a tech company have nothing in common. You, you can't take a girl anywhere at that point. But he's on to better titties, and I thought, how can I improve my life this year? So I stopped having sex with Republicans. It's nothing against them. It's just for people who don't believe in global warming or climate change, they sure turn my WAP into a DOP. Thank you. Brittany Ledesma. Welcome to the show, Brittany. Thank you. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, almost two years. Almost two years. All of it here in Austin, Texas? Yep. This is where you're from? Yeah, I'm from Austin. Born and raised? Born and raised, buddy. Wow. Look at that. You could tell she's got that Austin, like, I'm going to change my shirt up. I'm going to just roll it I in. I actually, <laughs> Allie McCoskey's live about how to do this. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Does she also do the thing where you tuck the shirt in through here and make it like a bikini. Remember that shit? No, I don't know oh, what you're talking gross. about. Oh. No, I'm not white trash. I'm sorry. Wow. What are you? What ethnicity are you? I'm Mexican. Just straight Mexican? Uh, half Mexican. Okay. And oh, that's right. Half, half gay. Half white. Yeah, okay, half Mexican, yeah. half, half gay. Mexican. You have a Mexican father and a white mother? Yes. Right. How did they meet? Do you know? Uh, blind date. And it worked out very well to stay in an unloving marriage. Wow. How about yeah. that? You have a boyfriend? No, I'm single. Okay. Whoa, there's a very horny man next to the stage right now. now. Wow. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, so, um, wh how long have you been single for? Um, almost two years as well. Wow. Do you yeah. like it like that? Oh, yeah. I d every <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, Brian. <laughs> you know I'm serious when I call you Brian. <laughs> <laughs> I like being single to an extent, but then I always get to the point where I'm like, well, I want a relationship. Then someone gets too close to me and actually wants something, and that terrifies me. And you said you're bisexual. So like, yeah. and during these single years that you've been having, what do you, uh, what do you prefer? Like, what have you... What, what? It, I feel like it goes in waves. It's like with food. Sometimes I'm into entrees. Sometimes I'm just a big appetizer girl. Wow. So like, how it's about your way. most recent hookup? Was it a boy or a girl? It was a boy. Okay. How did that happen? Um, we're friends, but uh, he had a giant dick, and so I keep him around. Wow. How'd you find out? How'd you find out he had a giant dick? Did the VHS it run out? It was just a very, uh, you know, uh, the VHS ran out. We both neither came. Right. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. How did you find out he had a giant dick? Uh, you know, it was one of those things where you just hope for the best. Wow. Wow. Look at that. You know? <laughs> My goodness. Yeah. Seemed like a good spinner. <laughs> Red band. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> he's really misbehaving. He has, he's a, he has a lot of pent up energies. I can he's tell. playing a character. Yeah. yeah. He's like the Harvey Weinstein of this show. Oh, come on, no, Tony. I love it. Uh, so, uh, how about you? What do you do for work? I just graduated college, so now I'm just unemployed. What'd you get yeah. your degree in? Uh, psychology. Okay. What yeah. are, you gonna, are you planning on doing something with Literally that? Literally nothing. No. No. I wanted to go into psychiatry, but um, my family's a basket case. And so I just realized that I don't have the empathy for people. Uh -huh. I'm afraid like I'll, list, like I'll listen to their problems. Well, they'll tell me their problems, and I won't listen. And I don't want someone, like, killing themselves because of me, so. All right. Yeah. So what are you going to get into, like, Uber Eats or something, or? Pretty much, that's it. I work for my dad. He's an oil and gas engineer. And uh, I'm not a fan of oil and gas, but I like that it pays my bills, so. Oh, wow. Uh, Red Band works with gas as well, all yeah. the time. <laughs> right now. Yep. A little, little too Zantac, <laughs> and it's good. It goes right away. <laughs> Gives me cancer. All right. So, uh, Brittany, any special skills or talents that you have? Oh, God. You putting know, me on the spot. You know how to do magic or rap or sing or anything, uh, anything, anything that you could show off to this audience? Oh it's like God. show and tell. I mean... When you're bi, do you go to guy porn or girl porn? Good question. I'm not really into porn. I wish I was. What? I need, like, a plot there, you know? I try. <laughs> the only porn I've seen was Wizard of Oz XXX. Well, that's probably why you don't, you're Whoa. not into porn. What the fuck <laughs> is wrong okay, with you? Okay, but those <laughs> little people, I think that's the correct thing to say. Um, I saw a woman. The it, Wizard it, of Oz XXX. Okay. 
She if got I a only dick had inside a of her the dick. size of her torso. <laughs> yeah. They're the people with real skill. What was the Wizard of Oz XXX? Tell us about this. Uh, they just really wanted to be actors. You can tell. Oh, it was well, very that's sad. Most porn. But what <laughs> it was, was like? What was it. like the storyline? Like what was? Oh, it was. <laughs> a, it was I, I have no. I just mainly remember seeing people like the little people getting plowed. I. I oh, saw, there was I midgets know. in it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, shit. No, like. There's bring a this. Bring this up on your <laughs> iPad, Red Band. Let's let's get a closer look at the Wizard of Oz XXX. I have to find out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a uh, fun fact. That's actually Tom Segura after he broke his knee and arm. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. This is a, uh, this was, that was a special Tony Red Band hybrid. Uh, I, t- I texted him the other day after I saw the video for the first time. I'm like, we absolutely, positively need this sound effect for the show. <laughs> really is Tom Segura. <laughs> Get well soon, Tom. You sound like a midget <laughs> porn. <laughs> <laughs> wow, is this it? Is this the right? Can you confirm? Can you come back here and look real quick that this is the actual <laughs> movie that you saw? <laughs> is that it? Do you remember 90%. that? 90%. What? I, this was like two years ago. The last time. Uh, yes. How do you yeah. forget? Oh, wow. Dor- Dorothy doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee- <laughs> Jesus! All right, that's enough, Red Band. Wow, the Tin Man's going. Oh my God, Toto's squirting. <laughs> okay. All right, that's not Toto. Toto's a dog. All right. So Brittany. Um, wow. I'm really at a loss of words here after watching Dorothy just get. <laughs> A house dropped on her. <laughs> what made you want to get into stand-up comedy? You said psychology. You felt like someone that you're working with might commit suicide, but two people killed themselves during your set tonight. I know. So I'm interested to know I'm why. I'm still killing people. It's a bad okay. habit. What made you want to get into stand-up? Uh, Do you have any favorites? Nikki Glaser is my favorite. Oh, that's nice. Stand-up. She's a nice girl. I, my dream would be to ro- be roasted by her. No mm-hmm. offense. You could roast me and I would cry, but it would be great. No, it's okay. Um, You'll listen back to this episode and realize I made fun of you throughout the entire oh, thing. got it. <laughs> it just doesn't feel like it right now. The adrenaline's <laughs> kicking in. The, it's like an actual like physical injury. It doesn't hurt until afterwards. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know. I like dealing with stuff this way. Um, and when You live by yourself? Happen. You have a roommate? I live by myself. I hope no one comes to kill What's me. What's your apartment? I feel like you, uh, you live in a dirty apartment. Am no, I, right? I live in a really nice one. How many of you think there's a bunch of empty glasses around her yeah. bed right now? I get that vibe. <laughs> John raised his hand over there. He knows, too. He knows. I'm surprisingly clean, but my bed is now in my living room, which is uh, not ideal. No, that's great. That's how I do it. I like so. that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, if you eat in bed ba- and you get, get messy, you just clean the sheets. Red Band actually recently moved his bed into his kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Shorter walk to the fridge. <laughs> yeah. Is a, uh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, all right, Brittany. Well, nice to meet yeah. you. You know what? I'm going to tell you this. I made fun of you a lot, but I will say this. This is one of the funniest performances by a female comedian I've ever seen. How about a big hand for Brittany Ledesma, Good everybody? Job. How you guys doing back here, huh? Look at this table. They get my butt crack the whole time. This foursome. Fuck yeah. Look at that. How about another hand for Zach Bogus up here? If anyone's catching the coronavirus, it's him. All right. Your next comedian on this stage goes by the name of Brian McDuffie. Brian McDuffie. McDuffie. Here we go. Eventually, here comes Brian McDuffie. That sounds like a family guy. How many of you make some noise if you've already had the coronavirus? Very good. Those of you that don't will be able to make some noise in just two or three weeks, so it's very exciting. Wow, look at this guy. It's Brian McDuffie, everybody. What up, y'all? How you doing? Uh, my name is Brian McDuffie. 
all this sexiness. Uh, my name is Brian McDuffie. There's only one, well to, one way to spell Brian, with an I. If you spell it with a Y, that's Ryan with a B. Get it for me, Red Band, get it. Right, if you put the A before an I, that's brain. Use your brain, you idiot. Come on, baby. Come on. I know I'm just exuberating all this manliness up here, all this high testosterone, you know. I'm actually a little insecure, you know. Uh, I'm not fat. I'm chubby. There's a difference, all right. Fat people don't talk to women. I go up to women, I'm like, what's up, girl? You got a dad? <laughs> that's real. I really do that. Don't get mad at me. Uh, it works like two out of five times. Get mad at your dad, all right? Killing the game with it, man. Uh, I'm just going to let you admire the bod for a minute. I'm looking sexy. How much time I got? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, you all right, were not we're just going to call it at that. I couldn't remember the rest of my jokes anyway. You people intimidate me, all right? We all know. We know, Brian. We know. Brian McDuffie, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, how's it going? Are you okay? No, I'm terrified right now. Why? What's wrong? Because you got this killer look in your eye, and I'm scared. You're small, but I know you're scary. Jesus Christ. What the hell? What the man? fuck? What do you judge everybody by their size? Yeah. What kind of person does like that? Like 300 years ago, I'd be running a little Viking village, you know? For what? Their food? <laughs> <laughs> uh, raping you. and pillaging, you know? Oh my God. You have a good you... Seth Rogen laugh. <laughs> Hopefully it makes me famous. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank it's you. one of Red Band's seven impressions. <laughs> Seth Rogen uh. laugh. Uh, yeah, you are uh, You're something else. You Thanks, look, man. <laughs> you look like, I don't know, someone that got locked in an Italian restaurant their whole life. I mean, there's something very like the Chin Giganti, like... Uh, you Italian? No, man, I'm uh, Irish. No, man, I'm Irish. Uh, bla black Irish. I got to get the props, you know? Yeah, yeah, baby. What does Thank that you. mean? Thank what's, you. what's black Irish? I have no idea. It's just what my family told me, so I've been running with it. <laughs> right? Thank you. Thank you. Jeez. What the fuck we is that lady Indians. saying? She Thanks. rapes okay. Indians. Now I'm just white. I'm done. What the I'm fuck just white is that from lady now on. Saying? Brian, right? shut the fuck That's up. That's it. What did you say, lady? Jesus Christ. They are putting liquor in the drinks here tonight, everybody. Wow. By the way, one of the funniest female comedians of the uh, night. Yeah. <laughs> so, Brian, how long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, about two years. About two yeah. years. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, how long have you been on the uh, Tony Chacon's New Orleans seasoning bottle? <laughs> I don't think it's even the right company that I said, but... I feel like an idiot. I don't even know what that means. If anybody looks it up, it'll be really funny. Uh, yeah, you look like you're sort of like made out of Play-Doh or something like that. You have like a, a doughy face. What do you like to eat? Uh, Italian food. You guessed it. You really? Know? Yeah, me and you, baby. You don't gain weight from it. It just b goes onto my it's titties. True. You, know? you just go straight with that Texas toast, huh? Texas toast. I love it. Texas toast. Wow. <laughs> Brian. My God. Now, you talked a lot about, uh, about women, surprisingly, during your set. Yeah. I'm a, are you, are I'm you, are a, you good with the ladies? I'm good with them, baby. I'm good with them. Like how, how do, in what way, Brian? Stop trying to be funny with your body, Brian. It's all I got. I'm trying to reform the Play-Doh, stand up straight. Now these are pecs, you I'm know? I'm talking about your face when I talk about Play-Doh, not, 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 not your actual, like, torso. Like, even Red Band, I mean, he's massive from the neck down, but his face keeps, a, like, a little bit of a shape. You, it, you, yours, it looks like it's, like, the first place it goes. It's very shapely. You know about this? You know you have a shapely You have head? a weak chin yeah. is what he's saying. <laughs> well, when I get a beard like that, it'll all cover up. It'll be good. You know, that's my goal, man. I've, once I get those patches filled in, I'm money. Mm. God, I'm money. I, I hate you so much, Brian. Uh, you sure not a Brian with a Y? Special skills or talents? <laughs> How about you, Brian? Any hobbies or special skills? Yeah, man. I uh, pulled a hammy playing woofa ball today. Uh, oh. That's one of my favorite hobbies. I'm a basketball player, as you can tell by the great bod. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> uh, I golf? You look like you ate a hammy the other day. What kind of golf do you do? Uh, the 
the regular kind. Really? Is there any other type holes? of golf? Yeah, my dad works for Callaway Golf, actually. Wow. Yeah, we'll become okay. friends. I'll get you the hookup. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're yeah. one of my favorite people I've Thank ever you. met. Thank you. We're friends life. now. We're friends. Hell yeah. Go Black Irish. <laughs> <laughs> That's also what they call the Notre Dame football team. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're the on Irish, my side now. Hell yeah. They're black. Um, you never asked your mom what she meant when she said you're black Irish? No, my, my mom just tells me we're white. Be happy about it. My dad's the one that's like, you're black Irish. Be proud. Uh. What does your dad do for work? He, he doesn't listen to me. The yeah, golf. he works oh, at Callaway right. Golf. What do you I'm do for work? I'm trying to help you out, what Tone. You? I'm trying to help you out. Brian, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for work, Brian? Uh, nothing right now. I'm running that uh, unemployment train. What did you do before? A uh, bartender. Really? Yeah. Wow. Hey, I need money, dude. I'll suck your dick 100 bucks right now. I swear to you. Okay? Look at that. It's not a joke. Look at that. He's willing to suck By the, the sound of your voice, it sounds like you need it, buddy. I'm all right. All right. All right. All right. Well, Brian, uh, I'm going to cut this one short just because yeah. uh, every time I ask you a question, you talk for a long period of time. You figured out the secret to being dismissed I'm, ridiculously. I'm nervous. Early. I'm nervous. That's why, Tony. I'm it's nervous. All right. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, about two years. Two years. Well, yeah. when you're on in another two years, I'm sure it'll go better. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Ladies and guys, gentlemen, Brian, Brian McDuffie, everybody. <laughs> Ah, we're flying through it. We've already had eight people up tonight. We're getting through it. Wow. I am excited for this one. Oh, wow. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, your next comedian goes by the name of Octavius Thunder. Wow. This sounds promising. Let's get Octavius Thunder up here. Here he comes. Octavius Thunder is making his way to the stage, I do believe. Here he comes. This is this is real. It's really happening. Here he comes. Guys, make some noise for Octavius Thunder, everybody. Hello. That's not my real name. Uh, I, I'm so Jewish that I grew a mullet so I don't have to pay for haircuts every couple of weeks. I'm so Jewish I became a Christian because the Bible's free. Uh, I got a, a dog. His name's Pablo Escobar. He's a service animal. His service is finding loopholes in federal regulations and exploiting them. And he's really fucking good at it. I, don't impress people. I want to impress girls by telling them he's a rescue so I beat the shit out of him every night. I'm just kidding. I used to live in Los Angeles, and uh, I used to when I'd go on walks with him, I, people would try to start a conversation with me, with I, which I hated. So I try to freak him out. They'd be like, "Oh, is that a boy or girl?" I'd be like, "Oh, he's transgendered." And since I lived in LA, they'd be like, "Oh, no way! My cousin's cat is transgendered." And I'm like, "God damn! I need to get the fuck out of this city." And I did, and I'm here, and it's great. Uh, I met a, a girl on an online dating app for abusive relationships. It's called eHarmony. And she's Christian and into bondage, so when we have sex, she likes to nail me to a cross and fuck me. There you go. That's the end of his set. Octavius Thunder. It went good. You want to give us your real name, or are you going to stick with Octavius? Uh, Eli Halpern. Eli Halpern. <laughs> Octavius Thunder was cool. Eli, I know you, right? Yeah, I used to see you in L.A. all the time at the, at the comedy store. Well, welcome, welcome. You look different. Yeah, I, I try to change up my look all the time because, you know, when people are like, how do you look at yourself in the mirror after you do terrible things? I just shave and then I'm like, oh, that wasn't me. That was some other guy. I like your style. Are you on a drug tonight? You have so much energy. I, I'm always on something. Adderall? I, 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 just, I just have an energy drink, though. Oh, okay. You have a bang? Uh, one of those. Okay. I don't remember. It's not worth noting. All right. I guess not. Jesus. All right. My God. Have you ever I'm been not, on... I'm not trying to get defensive, man. I just saw an energy drink at the store and I was like, I'm tired. Wow. From all the drugs I did last night. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Have you been on Kill Tony before? Yeah. I don't remember. What, what it's, what's happened? What's been some highlights of your previous appearances? Uh, I did great last time. I told you that you looked like a pedophile who was also the victim of pedophilia. Yeah. This time I would like to tell you that you look like a bobblehead doll of yourself. 
that's these are all some of my favorite things that I've <laughs> that I've heard over my entire life, Eli. But uh, you did it absolutely. You look like something that Theo Vaughn would shit out of his butthole. <laughs> there you go. I wasn't even gonna make fun of you, but I'd rather go in there. In where? In Theo Vaughn's butthole. Oh, are you gay? Yeah. No, just a big fan. Oh, okay. There you go. It's incredible. Comedy fans nowadays, they'll do anything. Are you really so Jewish? You are Eli. Eli's a Jewish name. Uh, Jewish enough. Jewish. That's like my victim card, you know? Because like, I'm like a tall, in-shape white guy. Everyone's like, fuck you, you douchebag. I'm like, no, 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 I'm a Jew. Yeah. They killed my ancestors. Oh, we feel bad for you. It's 2020. 21. Fucking. Wow. Time this flies. Is, this is one energetic, uh, <laughs> one energetic Jewish guy, huh? I I'd say anxious. Okay, what do you do for work, Eli? How do you survive? You live um, here in Austin now. Yeah, uh, I was doing Amazon, selling stuff on Amazon, like kitchenware and stuff. And uh, right now, I'm working on building a cricket protein bar company. A protein bar made out of made actual out of crickets. crickets. Yeah. Ugh. Wow. Well, I heard a lot of them during your set. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who's the bobblehead now, bitch? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> unbelievable. Wait, how are you selling shit on Amazon? Like that must be hard to do since it's just a website that people go to and buy things. You know, like how are you, how are you selling? You buy stuff well, I, and then you resell it. Yeah, oh, I buy shit from China and then I, I ship it into the Amazon oh, like warehouse, the marketplace, shit. and they redistribute okay. it. See. Wow, you really are so Jewish. <laughs> well, I was in college, and I just would zone out in class, and I'd be like, how do I make money without doing work? Mm -hmm. So I just got into e-commerce. Right. I've always been a fan of computers. Yeah. What VR you... porn. Yeah. You yeah. ever see Wizard of Oz XXX? No. I did see a pterodactyl porn, though. Anyone here seen that? Google nope. that when you get home. All right. Or don't. There you, go. there you go. We have some more crickets showing up. Uh, what happened in the pterodactyl porn? There's two guys dressed like pterodactyls tag teaming this girl. Wow. Jeez, all that excitement. Who even needs the girl? Am I right? <laughs> all right. Eli, do you have a girlfriend? No. <laughs> Jesus. My goodness. Uh, how I have about a lot of girls that hate me, though. Why? Uh, I'm still trying to figure that out. Come on, you must have some hint of a reason, right? I, I'm such a narcissist, I'm just convinced that I'm just so amazing, everyone just falls in love with me. Really? But in reality, it's probably just because I'm a selfish piece of shit. Wow. Either you're getting booed, or there's a cow in the back of the venue right now. <laughs> I've never heard a boo sound more like a moo in my entire life, but we have arrived in Texas. God like, only like I, I don't have fuck buddies, I have fuck enemies. Really? But they still like to fuck you, even though you have a Jewish penis. Yeah, I, well, my dick's so small, it's considered microdosing. Wow, look at that. This one, just, just, just. <laughs> so how, how rough, are, rough crowd. How do you, how are you going to make these cricket protein bars? Uh, I'm going to take cricket flour, uh -huh. which is just ground up crickets. And everyone's like, ew, gross, bugs. But like, you're not going to take a bite out of a cow. You got to prepare it right. And it's environmentally friendly. I've uh, had it before, but, you know, a kind bar tastes good also. You know, like, I could just buy that right, instead of having a cricket bar. Yeah, but <laughs> we should be eating bugs because you're going to kill them anyways with agriculture. Why not fucking use them for something? Yeah. Wow. How many of you want to light Eli on fire right now? <laughs> it seems like, seems like there's well, a lot. Well, I hate people. myself more than any of you ever could. Prove it to us. Tell us how much you hate yourself, Eli. Well, I also hate the world. Like, I would kill myself, but I don't want to make the world a better place. <laughs> no. My goodness. Have you gotten the coronavirus yet? I don't get tested. Have you have Jesus. you gotten ridiculously sick for five to eight days? No. I have a great immune system. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, fueled by rage, I think. Really? A, a, a Jewish guy with a great immune system? <laughs> Are we sure about this? I right. take a lot of supplements. Yeah, like what? What type of supplements do you take? I heard cocaine. That's, that's one of them. Zyrtec. A lot of Zyrtec. I'm allergic to my own dog. Is that true? Yeah. What's your dog's name? Pablo Escobar. Oh, that's right. You said that. I fell asleep for 60 seconds. 
Um, all right, Eli. Well, we learned a lot about you. Welcome back to the show. You were in L.A. for a long time, right? Yeah, about uh, four or five years. And how long have you lived here now? Three months. Three months. There it is. What made you want to move here three months ago? I like having a life. Yeah. I like doing stuff. What do you like to do in Texas? Um, going to bars, exercising, going to parks. Cocaine. Listen, buddy. It's not even cocaine anymore, by the way. By COVID the way, shut down the borders. It's, he's it's been all heckling all night, but it took him heckling you for him to get his first laugh <laughs> well, of the he just night. Said the same, he just said the same thing twice. <laughs> Come up with a new heckle. Eli, fun times. There he goes. Eli hey, Halpern, everybody. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? What do you guys think we should go to the bucket one more time, huh? All right. This is it. A lot of pieces of paper in here, but only one can be pulled. And your final comedian of tonight goes by the name of D.P. Hinsdale. D.P. Hinsdale. D. Here he comes. Hinsdale. This should be exciting. Here comes DP. Oh. Oh, fuck I'm glad yeah. we went to the bucket again. Absolutely. <laughs> this shit's about to go motherfucking down. Oh, yes. Thank you, God. Thank you. This is a thing of beauty. The bucket provides us again with the comedy stylings of J.P. Hinsdale. So I've been reading the Bible a lot because a friend died. And um, is it just me or is the Immaculate Conception like the biggest fucking bluff in history? Seriously, I mean, were just people just gullible back then? And even if it is true, I mean, does that make Joseph like the first cuck in history? I mean, seriously, it's awful. I mean, nobody wants to be the first. And then, yeah, I mean... Eventually, Mary and Joseph laid together, and they had children, right? So they had sex. And even if Joseph is doing the best he can, and Mary's really getting into it, all of a sudden she starts screaming, Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! One fucking night you can't bring him up! Jesus Christ! Why is everybody screaming? Go to bed! Nobody's talking to you! You're not my real father! And does that make God like a deadbeat dad since he didn't show up at the, till the end? I mean, do I have to feel better about my father because he was a deadbeat dad? I mean, he faked his own death, so he raised it to a new level, but still. Um, yeah, it's just, it, I, I just have so many problems. There you go. J.P. Hinsdale getting all of his time in. Come on up there, J.P. You can, you can take your mask off. You can stay a while. You don't have any, you don't have any symptoms, do you? No. Right. I tested negative like uh, two days ago. I love it. Perfect. The only super spreader that you take part in is when you're putting peanut butter and jelly on bread. <laughs> if you add the bourbon bacon, it's magic. Say that again? If you add the bourbon bacon, it's magic. Ooh, I like your fucking style. For those of you listening, J.P. Hinsdale makes Red Band look like Tony Hinchcliffe. <laughs> you are a beautiful shape. Yeah, I was uh, conceived in the booth of a Bob's Big Boy, so this was kind of inevitable. Is that true? Yes. Red Band's obsessed with Bob's Hell Big yeah. Boy. Hell yeah, I might be your father. Glendale, California. Oh, Glendale. I doubt it. At Burbank, it's the one Yeah, I my did. mom just wanted the tip. Wow, look at that. She had sex in a Big Boy and had one. Exactly. My God. She Ooh. got the, the Big Boy sauce. I love your style, man. I feel like you could have talked about almost... How long have you been doing stand-up? Three months. Three months. Let me tell you something. Tonight, not your night, uh, right? Okay? But let me tell you something. Fair enough. You have an extraordinary amount of energy and, like, a take. I feel like if you would have talked about anything but the Bible, you would have destroyed. Well, ask me anything. All right. Let's fucking get into it. So, JP, this is it. This is another episode of Who Are You with JP Hinsdale. So let's find out everything about JP. How long have you lived in Texas? 13 years. 13 years. What's your favorite restaurant in town? 
Uh, in this town? Sure. Uh, I don't. I don't really come out How here. How about that other much. towns? Um, I live in Rome, Texas. My favorite barbecue joint is four hundred seven barbecue. Wow, four hundred seven. Yeah, that's also what your scale says in exactly. the morning. Exactly. <laughs> Rome, Texas. Yeah, I had a special order it, and it's R H O M E, like our home. They spelled it wrong just just to make wow. it special. Wow, that's crazy. What made you move to Rome? A uh, series of poor life choices. Like what? Uh, I tried to help out my sociopathic con artist mom. Mm-hmm. So that she basically uh, stuck me with a mortgage that I didn't want and a bunch of other shit. Damn. Got my car repoed. Oh, my God. So She fucked up your credit. Oh, she's fucked up more than my credit. Yeah? yeah. What else has she fucked up? Oh, everything. Is she the one that fed you a lot when you were a little baby? Actually, she's the one that starved me a lot, so this is why this happened. Oh, she's a good woman. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I mean, look at that. You were a little boy, and now look at you. Now look, I'm a big boy now. That's it. You really are. You're one of the, I mean, you're right up there with, uh, with some of the greats. I mean, you could be Amy Schumer's stunt woman at any given moment. I think I have better tits. That's probably oh, that, true. Definitely. It's probably true. Definitely. And your pussy smells better. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. I clean thoroughly. I love it. So, JP, how do you, uh, how do you uh, make money? Um, I'm an industrial mechanic. Industrial mechanic. Yeah. Is that, are you just, they, they, are you a normal mechanic, but you're industrial sized? How does that work? Yeah. I mean, I, I, they got to put me where I fit. Square up to the audience so they can see you, or should I say round up to the audience? Uh, JP owning it. This guy's just a boatload of charisma. Uh, JP, tell us, uh, tell us more about you. Just tell us about you, JP. We really want to um, know. Well, anything really you could just take it over yourself i mean anything you want to know man i i don't How know about where hobbies to... what are you into what do you take your mind off of uh... um this drugs Ooh, what kind of drugs well whatever i can get oh my goodness in yep. fact you know the person that died that was my drug dealer's wife so that was pretty tough you wow know? she was ride or die my so. goodness when you say ride, are you talking about a rascal scooter? No, no, no. I'm the fat one. What type of drugs are you into? You ever snort breadcrumbs? Uh, I'm really into the, the fucking Cheddar Bay Biscuits from Red Lobster. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I can't get enough of that shit. Seriously, though, how about drugs for you? Weed, you know, normal shit. Oh, okay. I'm pretty mellow. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, so, uh, how about like love life? What's that like? Um, it's miss, 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 pity hit, miss, miss, sometimes pity hit, sad hand job in back of car, miss, miss, miss. Wow. Sad hand job in the back of the car. Let's talk about this, shall we? Who was more sad? You or her? Honestly, both of us. I mean, I, I felt bad for her and she felt bad just being there. Wow. My God. Who does the hand job, though? Like, why even? That's like the, you know, because that's when you don't want to commit to the blow job. That's like the least, I mean, wow. you can do that's still sexual. JP gave an honest answer there. Yeah. I No bones about it. Just straight up. That's what they want to do when they don't want to suck your dick. Exactly. So, JP, uh, how long did the hand job last? I'm interested to know. How at, at one point, we just both let it go. It was just like, you know, it was 15 minutes of just like, yeah, this isn't working for both of us. Wow. Yeah. Really? 15 minutes and yeah. then it just ended? Yeah. God, I'm on some new medication. It's just not, it's not working out. Oh, oh okay. Uh, Jesus you want to correct? All right. <laughs> Jeez. That, I love it. JP, you give real answers up here. <laughs> Whatever you want to know, man. I'm on open book. Hell yeah. Uh, so uh, tell us uh, any, any other like, special skills or hobbies of yours, like uh, any, any big dreams that you have other than stand-up comedy? I mean, no. I have lots of nightmares, but not many dreams. Yeah? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not. What kind of nightmares? Do you have a reoccurring one? Oh, yeah. Like what? I have a dream where I'm pinned in between two rocks on a pyramid and uh, vultures are just eating me. Ripping me to pieces. What the fuck? Wow. <laughs> Look at that. I've, as a kid, I've been locked in an aviary like four times. You've been locked in what? An aviary four times by what? accident. You've been locked in a well, what? Well, once with some purpose. What's an aviary? That's where they keep birds so they can fly around free. You've been locked in a bird cage? Well, this- not a cage. Like an aviary is like a big, they got trees and shit so they can kind of fly around. How do you l- keep getting locked in aviaries? <laughs> uh, well, Look once at-, at the LA Zoo. 
And it took two hours for my mom to realize I wasn't with her anymore. Wow. Once she was drinking with her friend who happened to have an aviary in their house, and she thought it was funny that I was a terrified bird, so she just shoved me in there while they got drunk. The third time, my grandfather told me that no pussy grandson of his was going to be afraid of birds, so he held the door shut and kept me in there. <laughs> there was a fourth time, but I can't remember it, but I'm sure if you I You know what? Remember. Three out of four ain't hey, bad. Hey, hey. You remember being locked in an aviary more than anyone else I know, that's for sure. Wow. <laughs> my goodness gracious. What were you doing? Looking for chicken and turkey? That's odd. No. That is very or odd. Or Auschwitz, perhaps? <laughs> Whoa. Nah, it's an that's, that's a real turducken of a joke. I love it. I love it. How far away is Rome, Texas from here? Oh, fucking far, man. Yeah. Almost going up to Oklahoma near Texas Motor Speedway. Wow. And you drove here for this? Oh, yeah. Um, two comic friends of mine told me I should come down and give this a shot. Wow. I love that. And they signed up, too? Yes, sir. Wow. And you're the one that got on. Yeah, they're really pissed about that. I bet. <laughs> I mean, they've been really putting in their time like seven years. I mean, they're right. real fucking seven. killers, and Heck I'm yeah. just I'm just the guy they drag around for stuff. And were you in the back seat, or did you ride shotgun or bazooka? What do they call it? Bazooka? <laughs> they had to put me in the trunk, you know? No, it's okay. Uh, so your mom conned you. You ever think about getting revenge on her? I mean, she's too good. It's like... I don't know. She's like kind of like a Bond villain. Villain, like every time she's nice to me, I know something's up. I'm already in the trap, so it's kind of like it's it's best to avoid her and just throw the minimal amount of money at her as you as you can to keep her distance. Wow, JP, I'm gonna tell you what. Like I said, I think you have so much charisma, and I think you have a you have great timing. Again, like when you were talking about being locked in uh, <laughs> aviaries, I didn't even know what an aviary was ten minutes ago. But, uh, but I, I mean, I think you should really, uh, really continue to uh, do this. And I think destiny has uh, put you in position to. And uh, I'll tell you what, if you, next time, uh, why don't you come back in like a month or so, write another minute, come back in a month, and I'll give you a guaranteed spot. How about that? I really appreciate it. Thank you. There you go. Thank you very much. J.P. Hemsdale, everyone. There you go. There's a fist bump. Take one of those. This motherfucker. Be careful, JP. All right. Now, that's normally where the show would end. But you guys want one more special treat, huh? I don't know. I don't think they really want it. That wasn't really very loud. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you all the way from Los Angeles, California, with a brand new minute. One of the most powerful figures in the history of Kill Tony. Legend, originally from Brooklyn, became a comedy god of improv in Chicago, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the one and only Michael Lehrer! In the flesh. Absolutely incredible. Your final comedian of the night, one of the most powerful regulars in the show's history. This is unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. The crowd is going wild. Michael Lair rolling up. It's about to go down right here. Ladies and gentlemen, come on, guys. Keep making noise for Michael Lair. This guy's a fucking star, people. <laughs> oh shit! I am one question for you. Where do the high school girls hang out? <laughs> Follow them. Who is having me shower tonight? <laughs> yeah, Austin, let me hear you. <laughs> I got my Corona vaccine in the back of an Uber. 
He had those little vaccine bottles mixed up with the British vaccines and peppermints. I'm like, well, he has five stars, and he was a doctor in Mexico, but why is he needle a Kreisan straw? And why is it in my pee <laughs> And it tickles when he blows into him. <laughs> A fuck barbecue. <laughs> I can live with dying. I cannot live with being fat. <laughs> fuck Western food. I live my whole life only consuming herbs and spices prepared for me by Chinamen. <laughs> Michael Lair, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah! Joke, 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 joke. joke. Yeah! Cowboy up! Cowboy Yum! When me is more like, Cowboy Down! Cowboy Down! Someone call 911. Cowboy Down! That is true. He came up with, with, a, with a look. You had the hat, the sunglasses. You look like if Brokeback Mountain actually had a broken back. Yeah. <laughs> More like Big Mac, man, and, oh. and it's someday, and a lot of you bitches are getting pregnant tonight. Absolutely. <laughs> I have to, whoever gives you that shower is getting pregnant, that's for sure. No doubt. Michael Lair is here, everybody, so... uh Yeah, baby! Tell us, uh, tell us what, what, what we've been missing from you, Michael. We haven't seen you in a little bit, so... Well, I've been enjoying Austin. I had today an Auschwitz burger. <laughs> it's the final solution to my appetite. And my asshole is not being tried for war crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Little fun fact: Michael's one of the only comedians in the history of the show that is taken that always uses to his advantage the possibility of the jokes that happened earlier in the show. Yeah, I'm chained in improvisation <laughs> now. I, all you know me as a dumb motherfucker, and I know a lot of dumb motherfucking improvising, but most of them are like, I want to do stand-up, but I have nothing interesting to say, so I'll pretend I'm a comedian and make shit up for 20 years. <laughs> Do you have a good uh, holidays? Uh, yeah, every day is a holiday for me. <laughs> Literally. Literally. Because it took me two lawyers and four years, but I'm rightfully so on disability. So um, every day, like... One, I don't know what day of the week it is. <laughs> Two, I'm drunk and high. <laughs> and three, I'm on the pussy patrol. Wow. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo, yeah. woo -hoo. He is the sheriff of the pussy patrol. How's that been going for you lately? Uh, uh, very good. Um, turns out a lot of fans of this show... Oh, whores. Ah. Oh. Wow. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> wow. Thank goodness for that, huh? 
So what's been happening? You take him for a little, uh, take him for a, a little, little spin. spin. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that, cause the weight limit on my singer is 270 pounds, and I weigh 180. So I'm looking for a PT bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. William, or, I'm sorry. For you. <laughs> I was going to say Red Band's boner just went away when he found out the wheelchair only holds 270 pounds. Stop right there. You're, you're going to have to get a different one, Red Band. <laughs> Michael, what else? You had a good Christmas? Did you get here? anything cool for Christmas, like new brakes or something? Yeah, um, <laughs> well, definitely nothing cool from either of you two, no matter how hard I work. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, Tony, is that my camera? Yeah. Alright, so Tony, every moment I see him, he gives me shit on a ramp. Ramp he bought from me. I did. I bought him an expensive ramp. Right. But he did not consult with me. The motherfucker with legs for wheels. <laughs> All right? We- wheels for legs. <laughs> if you had legs for wheels, that'd be really fucked that up. Would be. <laughs> That would be, everyone would want that wheelchair. (laughs) Now they're my legs, I swear. (laughs) So not only does Tony give me a gift trip, but this ramp be born for me. When he told me, he goes, Michael, I have a surprise for you. And I go, I bet there's a pound of weed. (laughs) And it was a fucking room. <laughs> it is I, true. I, I, yeah. I got him a very, very fancy ramp, and then uh, two weeks later, the lockdown started. Yeah. And by the way, they do not have a return policy on ramps. For anyone looking to buy a friend a ramp, don't do it. Give them a pound of weed. Yeah. You can't smoke a ramp. You know what? Here's the thing, I know a lot of musicians play here, but Tony was generous with the ram, but not generous when reading the instructions for the ram or taking his time to set it up. So imagine Christmas morning, you wake up, and your parent is like, hey, vulnerable person, <laughs> drive into this razor sharp zipper. I feel like a complete asshole right now. Uh, I think the mission you is sure? accomplished. I think the mission is accomplished. You sure? It's a very it's very expensive to ship a ramp from Los Angeles to Austin as well. It's very heavy. Well, I, I mean, I've been to Texas for about 22 hours, and this dope as fuck. <laughs> yeah! And I'll be here soon. But y'all don't give a fuck about people in wheelchairs. It is true. This is that what I'm about to tell you is true and is not a joke. At one point, I literally said uh, to some of the uh, producers and staff here at Antones before the show, I go, "Any chance we have a uh, a ramp for my friend that's in a wheelchair?" And the guy goes, "Normally, we just chuck people up there." <laughs> Chuck was the word, not not even That's toss. A great word. The word was Chuck. Another man's yeah. name was the word. I am. I'm like, could you pinner me up there? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there any uh, is there any woman in the audience that wants to uh, make Michael? La- it sounds like there already is. Okay, I was gonna say eat Michael Lair's ass and make him come, but. Uh, Sounds like we have a winner already. Guys, how loud can this place get for Michael Lair, everyone, huh? 
That's it. We did it. It took over 10 months, but you'll always be able to say that you were at the return episode, the first episode of the live audience. This show here tonight, you know, truly we were perhaps one of the only podcasts affected by, deeply affected by the coronavirus. We've always had a live audience, so uh, I'll tell you, we were all very, very excited about this and we're very happy that you guys were a lively bunch, so thank you so much for coming out. Risking it all. We're looking at the drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt right now. It is a very Texas edition of a Kill Tony drawing. Cowboyed up, almost gunslinger style. Everyone with hats and cool jackets on. Every print is available at RyanJEbelt.com, including a couple limited edition shirts and the brand new Kill Tony coloring book, which I'm sure is going to be an absolute sensation. Wait till you guys see the pictures of this thing. Uh... So, yeah, we did it. MichaelLairComedy.com for everything Michael Lair. William Montgomery is William Montgomery. David Lucas, funny, everything David Lucas. Guys, how about a big hand for the brand new band, huh? John Dees was on the keys, and he is John Keys on everything social media. That's J-O-N-K-E-Y-Z. Michael Hale on the drums, everybody. Come on. Michael Hale is Michael Hale drums, all one word. Michael Gonzalez on the electric drums. He is Mike A G O N Z 1 3. The guy has a password for an Instagram handle. And guys, on the bass, the great Jimmy Blazer, huh? All right. Red Band, am I missing anything? Nope. Guys, thanks so much for coming out. And we'll be doing this every week with a lot of new surprises. Yeah, it starts right now. You guys are also the first people to find out that we're going to be doing this every single Monday from now on right here at Antone's. Until the governor says we can't anymore. Or the mayor. Not the gay mayor. Uh, one more time, thank you guys so much for coming out, and we'll see you soon. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>